And here we are, ladies and gentlemen. We've made it. We are at the Wandering Squires Cup Finals for the G-Bracket. We have, in the teal, the Belgian, playing as the Bulgarians. And over in the orange, we have Red Clifford, playing as the Malians. Starting off, as always, on a, kind of a classic variant of the Nomad map. I am, as always, joined by Hiram of Tyre. Hiram, how's it going? Better than I deserve. How are you doing? Uh, same. Amen. Doing very well. Happy to be casting some Age of Empires. And in particular, just feeling really honored to have played a small part in this tournament, which, as you know, is uh, sponsored by T90 and Dave. I'm sorry, it's hosted by them. Sponsored by Microsoft themselves. Uh, it's just been an honor to be a part of this whole process and to have, you know, been able to play in this tournament. Going up against uh, Fede Almanco and then Ten Finger Tom was just an amazing experience. And then being able to track uh, through Tom's adventures uh, all the way up to the semifinals where he lost to Red Clifford. And now here we have Red Clifford going up against the Belgian uh, in the finals. It's just been an amazing experience. And it's just so cool to be here on this, uh, this finals set. So we've got like I mentioned a second ago, the Bulgarians versus the Malians. Hiram, why don't you go ahead and, you know, share with me your thoughts on that matchup. You know, that's a little tricky. Uh, on If we're talking about the sieves and, and just straight up fighting, you know, obviously that depends on the players, it depends on the map. And on Nomad, it's... Neither one of them has a significant, in my opinion, ban uh, bonus to Nomad per se. It's not the Spanish where you get the, the you know, the the instant bonus of your town center goes up faster. Mm -hmm. uh, or, the I'm sorry, I'm blanking on the name. The Vietnamese where you're going to see where your enemy puts up their town center or, or right. anything like that. Um, obviously, it's infantry versus cavalry. Uh, for the Bulgarians, I like it on a mm -hmm. nomad because it means you can lock down sections of the map with your three posts. Um, and if you decide to get a significant mass of infantry up early to do scouting, which is not necessarily a good idea, but some people do, you can transition that immediately into pressure on the opponent's town center. Mm -hmm. However, the Malians, uh, they get better pierced armor as the ages progress. And so by the end of the game, they're, they're not quite to goth levels of, mm. uh, I'll just eat your arrows all day and won't even notice. Right, right. Um, at least as far as the Huskarl, or they don't compare to a Huskarl. But on the other hand, they don't suffer from the severe disadvantage that a Huskarl does in that they're weak to melee. So I'm... if the Bulgarians decide to leverage their control over the map using a crate post by castle to imp, crate post isn't going to mean jack against upgraded Malian infantry. Mm -hmm. So that can just go a couple different ways. Um, the Malians do get longer gold mines. They last 30% longer, which can be good. But, again, on a game like Nomad, on a map like Nomad, where so much is up in the air and stuff goes to chaos so fast, yes, that can be a big advantage. But more often than not, uh, I see the game decided on other factors. So, who's to say? Right, right. Yeah, I mean, the thing that stands out to me with that matchup is, in particular, the, the nature of Nomad. Uh, the Malians are able to get that fishing ship out right away because of the cheaper buildings. Right. right. And that bonus is just so smooth. The, the way that this tournament worked, by the way, is from the beginning, uh, kind of at, in the first set, you could pick any civilization you wanted. But after round one, the tournament hosts looked at which civ was the most picked, and they banned that civilization for the rest of the tournament. So I want to say it was the Spanish that were you know, the number one nomad civ out of the gate. And so after round one, you couldn't pick Spanish anymore. And then round two, I, I, I don't remember from there, but there are a couple of names that jumped to my mind that are very, very good on nomad. And they slowly got whittled away. Well, the Malian civilization has sort of kind of gone under the radar for the most part. Uh, and I think it's a fantastic choice just for the opening aspect of things. Uh, and so I kind of favor Red Clifford here just for that alone. If right. things, if it goes to like a, a castle age and they're on even footing, 
then you're right. You, you've got the Crepost, which provides so much, uh, you know, location control, lockdown. Uh, the Conic is one of my favorite units in the whole game. Uh, you have infantry that you can always fall back on without needing to do any kind of, you know, well, I, I shouldn't say any kind. But, you you know, you, you don't have to tech up your infantry, right? Uh, you can go to them whenever you want. And the blacksmith upgrades are cheaper, they're faster. Bulgarians are an amazing yeah. sieve. So I, I like Bulgarians. But then at the same time, the community calls late game Malian infantry champ scarls because they yeah. are like diet huskarl with all of that extra pierce armor. Uh, it means that you can really just go heavy into infantry with Malians in a way that you can't with a lot of other civilizations. And right, um, I think there's well, some flexibility for both civs. Yeah, yeah, and fully upgraded Malian infantry can trade with Conic, both mounted and mm -hmm. dismounted, very favorably. Mm -hmm. So. At least, again, from what I know, I'm no massive expert on the game, but in my experience, upgraded infantry, say a two-handed swordsman or a champion, will kill both the mounted and dismounted uh, conic. Um, so, and then the counter to infantry is generally archers. So, okay, if you can't go cab, where you go? You go archers. Well, that doesn't work. So, mm -hmm. I think that the line for the Malians is stronger. I think that the flexibility for the Bulgarians is technically stronger. One mm -hmm. thing I do want to say that does make a difference is the the food bonus that you get on siege mm -hmm. for the Bulgarians. Yeah. And if you can't deal with if you can't deal with infantry with archers and you can't trade with them mm -hmm. one for one with the conics, but you can go knights. But even that's you know that does trade favorably, but not super favorably. Mm -hmm. Or you can go into siege and right, right, yeah. I would love to see if if Clifford goes heavy into the Malian infantry, right? I would love to see heavy scorpion from the Belgian. Yeah, right. Uh, that would be a great choice. Now, one thing I do got to point out is we see Clifford here with the double docks as he is the first hit the feudal age. Uh, Belgian is still on one dock, and it doesn't appear that he is committing much to the water. Yeah. I don't know if that's a, maybe a, a strategy of his, you know, to maybe get more of a, a land focus. Maybe he thinks he can bait Clifford into wasting resources or something, right. but... Uh, I, I think we're going to see, uh, we, we do see Clifford, he's already got out two fire galleys. They're going the wrong way. They'll have to turn around and go all the way back. But eventually, they're going to find this, you know, this, you know, dock, this f fish eco. And if it's unprotected, he'll just shut that off easily. Yeah. Of course, the downside to the fire galleys, and I've told you before, is they don't trade favorably against regular galleys if you've got enough regular galleys. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other thing is they get countered pretty successfully via towers or cray posts. Mm -hmm. It's pretty That's easy, true. you know. That's if true. you lose, if you lose, uh, I'm sorry, if you lose control over the water at this stage in the game, you know the Belgian's already going up to castle, and he's already got stone. It's not hard to take control of the water back because you don't have deep seas; you have mm -hmm. long seas. Uh, it's pretty easy to take control of the water back with Krapos. And to that point, to exactly what you're saying there, we see the Belgian going up to the castle age now. It's fast castling, and he has eight vills on stone right now. This man yeah. wants to go for a Krapos drop? Question mark? But you know, maybe Clifford is already walling. Yeah. With this amount of villagers on stone, I would drop a castle. Okay, Kratos yeah. is good, but number one, it doesn't get you up to Imp. Uh, you still have to build two buildings um, or whatever, which you're probably going to do anyway, but still. It doesn't get you up to Imp. doesn't research you, your unique techs, and I'm not familiar enough with the Bulgarians. I think they get a, uh, uh, a tech that makes your militia have more armor, which would cause them, mm -hmm. your militia line, to have more armor, which would cause them to trade favorably with the uh, This is a Malian. critical moment. This may be Belgian kind of throat punching Clifford, like right at that moment that he needs to. Because, uh, wait a minute. Instead, he's he's throwing up a, an outpost first. But you know, right now Clifford's military is all naval, right? So yep. he's going for that naval push. Good for him. Yep. But and here we go. 
Krepos coming Krepos down on Calder. the town center. If, Number one. And look at that. Yeah, there's the, the house wall. There's the, the, the palisade, which kind of a... Or, yeah, not the house wall, the quick wall. Yeah, the quick wall, but even that... Foundation. All right, so, Clifford sees it in time. He's not going to lose Vils here. Yeah. But he's also not going to stop it. The advantage of throwing down that single foundation is you can just do a quick line behind instead of having to do mm -hmm. click, 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 click. Is he going to try to stop um, it? That's, that's a mistake. I, if he's going in for a Vil yeah, versus Vil fight, that won't is, work. He is, but it's not going to work. No, no, that, that won't work at all. That, that's an absolute You know, risk. if it was only two or three Vils, yeah. Yeah, no. But he... no. And again... If it's only th two or three vills, yeah. If they haven't quick walled behind <coughs> it, mm -hmm. he had, you know, he had the ability to quick wall behind it anyway. Um, Second Krepos coming out, and this is why I think Krepos was a better idea. It's just because, you know, it's cheaper. You can throw more down. You can, you can. You're basically tower rushing him with mini castles, right? Um, I suppose that's fair. And look at this. Oh, Conic out of the gate. This is a very, very, very good position if you are yeah. the Belgian. Now, having said that, um, we do see uh, that Clifford is up two Vils currently. Yep. So maybe what what he's got to be thinking, if you're Clifford, you have to stay calm and figure yep. out, like, if 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 your opponent has committed all of these resources and all these Vils to, uh, you know, the, the, the tower drop, or in this case, a Kripos drop, then... The, your economy is probably stronger than his. Yeah. So he's got to come up with a game Here's plan. the real tragedy. He invested all those resources into naval supremacy. Right. Yeah. And yeah, that's the point. by his dock. If they had moved in and claimed the fishing eco right away, I think mm -hmm. they'd be on a much closer to equal footing. As it stands, the tempo, mm -hmm. the momentum is entirely in the Belgians' court. Yep. But doesn't mean he's won it. I don't mean no, that at no, all. No, no, no. I, I don't it's think Belgians just, won. Yeah, he's just in control of the momentum. But right look now. at this. I mean, I don't know that Belgian even realizes what's happening here, but he's sort of like stuck in a corner. You know, yeah. I mean, it, if if the Krepos comes up before the castle does, if the Krepos can deny the castle, this is GG. Yeah, I agree, but I think the castle is going to go up first. He has more villages. Oh, look at Scorpion. Oh, Scorpion, Scorpion out. You called it. I love this. Now it won't be enough to stop it, but... It's not going to be enough. Not only is it not going to be enough, he's going to lose the Scorpion. He's going to lose the Conic, maybe the Villagers. Both go up. And and he will, over time, lose that Cray Post. Right, right. Now, that does still mean that, at least in the short term, uh, Clifford's not getting back onto stone. Yeah. If I am <laughs> Belgian at this point... I'm thinking I'm going back to home base and building up my yeah. eco and just securing yeah. my lead. Because if, if you're if you're trying to just win the game now, maybe you pull it off, right? But you also run the risk well, of maybe overextending and then giving away your lead. Yeah. Well well look at what he's done though. He's put down a siege workshop. Mm -hmm. And so he's able to put out rams to push back against that castle. Mm -hmm. Uh and well, what do you use to counter rams? Well, you use melee, but you can't really do that. Not against a... Uh, not with the Krepos in the background. Yep, yep. So Clifford's going to try to throw up a Siege Workshop and probably put out a Manganel or something, which is the right play. But by the time you get the Siege Workshop up and uh, you get the Manganel look, out... I, I, and Conix yeah. here shutting down this... Okay, the, the, the Siege Workshop comes up, but not without blood. Not without a significant cost. And now... You know, okay, you can put out a Manganel, but it's A, going to be vulnerable to the, to the uh, conics. Right. B, you're not going to get it out in time to save that castle. Not, probably not. Like, maybe, but probably not. Yep, yep. Uh... Now, he is throwing away his conics here. This is, uh, I think Clifford needs this. Yep. I mean, yeah, he's throwing away his conics, but... Clifford. Monastery coming He's, up. Yeah, good for him. Clifford nope. turns his fire galleys around. I guess he decides that, you know, there's no fishing eco. He might as well go home. But, uh... Or maybe his thought is, I'm winning everywhere else. You know, maybe I should just keep these guys alive. And, oh, I'm sorry, no, no, this is uh, Clifford. So losing. He's, so he's thinking, yeah. yeah, like, I don't I don't want to risk going forward and losing what I've okay, got. Okay, another maybe. Kratos coming in. 
Oh, yeah, but this one will be denied by the Onager. Yeah, Onager is the right call. Yeah. It, yes, it's it absolutely, absolutely the right call. Now, the only trick is that Onager can't do anything about a, you know, a Krepus that's already up. No, not a thing. Uh, and here we, we do see... I, I don't know that the Siege Workshop stays up. Yeah, I, I, I have severe doubts that it will. <coughs> but, uh, well, it do, could. Do... Oh, wait a minute. Okay, okay, maybe, maybe... Do Bulgarians get access to redemption? Oh, I don't know. I, that would be a fascinating option. Here's something Clifford needs to do. He, he needs to slip out of his own base. Here we go. And he needs to begin Sandra. building up. Mega yep. numbers, mega one down, one oh, down. One goes. Oh. Oh. Oh, my goodness. Oh, good Clifford did not need blow. that. Yeah. Onager versus Manganel, but the Manganel I mean, went. That yeah, wasn't that's Onager, Man Man Manganel versus Manganel. Onager's an oh, Imperial thought, upgrade. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I misspoke. I always okay. get them mixed up, Manganel and Onager. It's the only unit in the game where the upgrade changes the name. I do kind of wish yeah. it was Manganel and then, you know, I don't know. Whatever, like Hardy. I, well, no, that's your infantry. You go from militia to... Yeah. to not, I'm sorry, what am I talking about? But but like with the other siege units, you go from battering ram to... Um, Capped ram to Capped siege ram. Yeah. Siege ram, yeah. So... Now, what I would like to see, it, it, one small thing, take your conics and fight off the individual pikemen. Now you say, well, yeah. why would you do that? I mean, pikemen beat calf, right? But you have a blacksmith advantage, because Clifford does not have any blacksmith techs, and a numbers advantage. And at that point, yep. you know, on the, the, other the, hand, the, the bonus damage isn't that much. On the other hand, you've got the tempo. Mm -hmm. And like we say when we're playing other games, if normal tactics are working, you don't need to go for the advanced or fire or ships have finally moved in and have knocked out that fishing ego. Yeah. Good for him. I think it's too little too late. I mean if you like the numbers on food, yeah, you you got rid of the fishing ego, but you yep. know, you still only have X amount of villagers versus their amount of villagers. You know, it's twenty nine to forty five. Hiram, at this point, do you see any way for Clifford to come back from this? He's down 20 bills. I mean, it's hard to say there's no way. Because I've seen some crazy comebacks over the years. Mm -hmm. Do I think it's realistic or likely? You know, if they trade pound for pound, no. No way. I'll, ju I'll just put it that way. Mm -hmm. I mean, Clifford is cordoned off to one little tiny corner of the map. He's trying to wrap it out, which is, again, what he should do, reestablish somewhere else. Um, the advantage to playing against somebody who drops a bunch of cray posts on a particular location is if you're able to relocate, you know, yeah, you'll lose a town center, and that town center is worth X amount of wood and stone. But uh, that's a lot of stone invented, uh, invested into shutting down that one town center. So rabbiting out, well, it kind of kind of mitigates that loss and there's a couple good locations available there's this one down in the you know towards the southern corner that has wood stone and gold mm -hmm. um so i think he should have located or or put something there a long time ago but i'm not sure if clifford is speaking belgian or uh what that is, but yeah, he's calling the GG. You can kind of tell. I don't need to know the language to know that uh, Clifford was throwing in the towel there. And game one goes to the Belgian. I think that was a combination of knowing your sieve, skill. We were talking about, or at least I was talking about, how I, I thought the Malians were the stronger nomad sieve, but the Belgian knew exactly the strategy he wanted to bring to the table with the Bulgarians and executed it perfectly. Um, really, really great right. job from him. Uh, fantastic game one of this set. And here we are, game two. We have the Belgian playing as the Italians versus Red Clifford playing as the Malay. And I've got to point out, right out of the gate, we have a difference in opening moves 
which I find fascinating. We have uh, Malay starting with a house and then building a dock. Uh, well, I guess it's really not that different because now we have the Belgians starting with a dock and then a house. I don't know yeah. if that really makes much of a difference, but I mean, I think the dock start is better just because you know you you have less idle time. You can get the a fishing ship going while you wait. Just like well, it's funny. You are housed regardless, like because you have you oh, start with right. six units. So that's right. Well, I, I guess it really doesn't matter. I was all excited. Oh, there's a different opening, but no, not not really, not really. Yeah. Now, I, I have not seen a game on this map before. I, I believe this is the first time we've run across Compass in our yeah. casting of the, the G-bracket so far. So it's interesting. You've got four different coordinates, north, east, west, uh, south, and west. Uh, and we do have kind of a north versus west battle shaping up over here. Yep. I don't know that there's really any difference between the four. It looks like both contain two piles of gold, two piles of stone. Um... I'm just double checking that. I, I I could be wrong, but it looks like they all are pretty identical. So it's just a matter of the four coordinates. Each are connected by a little bit of a uh, kind of a land bridge, you know, with the or whatever you want to call that, that amphibious bridge. But what I notice, and I think we're going to see a lot of naval action on this map because both players have chosen civilizations with some significant water bonuses. Let me talk about the Malay yeah. first, because at least in my own experience, Hiram and you know, I don't know if you're with me on this, but I Malay are one of those civs I just have a hard time remembering the bonuses to. But the Malay... Yeah, I'm there. Yeah, they have... Let me pull them up here. One, they advance to the next age 66% faster. That's a pretty nice all-around bonus. Two, their fish traps are 33% cheaper, and they provide three times more food. So that means that if this goes to a late-game situation, and, you know, you're... you're you're, you've kind of mined out all the fish of the map that's all gone, then the Malay have the best fish traps in the game, and their fishing ships will be more valuable than the Italian equivalent. right? So in the long run, fishing eco favors the Malay. Um, they also have docks with double line of sight. So if I turn on line of sight here, and you can see what the Italian dock can see, and now you can see what the uh, the Malay dock can see. And that's actually really, really helpful because it means that your fishing ships uh, don't require as much micromanagement and scouting before they know where to go for their next, you know, their next fish. So that's kind of a nice bonus. Um, they, of course, they have the unique tech that upgrades their docks to harbors, which are docks to shoot arrows, right? And um, some pretty neat bonuses there, water focus. There are other things too, like cheaper battle elephants and... Uh, in the late game, they do have the Imperial Age Tech Force Levy, where their infantry uh, no longer costs gold. So you have trash infantry. That's pretty strong, right? So basically, I see the Malay as a late game powerhouse. They're going to have a lot of options if they can make it to that post-Imperial stage. And I'll favor them if we go into a post-Imperial, no gold left on the map kind of situation. On the flip side, we've got the Italians. And the Italians, I think, have uh, bonuses that come into play much sooner. Probably the key one in a Nomad map scenario is that their fishing uh, units are cheaper. Uh, they are, in fact, 15% uh, cheaper. And on top of that, their dock and university techs are 33% cheaper. So uh, out of the gate in the Dark Age, they're saving resources with every fishing ship they build. And they want to build a lot of fishing ships because that's what you always do on a Nomad map, right? But then you get into that Feudal Age, that Castle Age, and you're wanting to upgrade your navy, and you want to take control of the water, well, it's cheaper to do that too, right? Uh, so I really think that the Italians have some good options there navy-wise. Um, they also have cheaper gunpowder units. Advancing up every age is cheaper. And so those, those again, are just really nice, solid bonuses for a Nomad-style map in particular. Yeah. Um, very good stuff. You combine that with, um, as we see, some laughter taking place. I, I think it's... The Belgian is actually trying to block Clifford's fishing ships with his uh, transport ship. That's that's really funny. That, Not doing a whole that lot. That is but, pretty funny. Yeah. 
I mean, just, making him a a little less efficient. Yeah, I, I don't know how much it's worth. Efficient. Yeah, look at this. That's that's that ridiculous. Is hilarious. But uh, and then of course you've got things like the the Genoese crossbowman, which I love as a unique unit. Um, it's great if Clifford does decide to go into say battle elephants with the cheaper battle elephants. Well, Genoese yep. crossbowmen are the perfect counter to that. And then they're also great against infantry. So, you know, if they decide to go trash infantry, you still have a counter there. Italians are a good choice. I think Malay are also a good choice. It just It's a matter, in my opinion, of power spikes, whether the Italian player uh, will be able to take advantage of his power spikes. And if not, if it just goes on and on and on, I think that the Malay have the advantage here. You know, in a, in a game or in a map with more significant i guess i'd say uh water right by more significant i mean you know where on islands or something where you absolutely have to cross the water to get to where you want to go uh i think the malians have or sorry the malay not the malians uh have probably a better advantage but on a map mm. like this where if you can get across the shallow you can bypass naval buildings almost entirely I don't know. With an earlier yeah. power spike, I think I favor Italians. I could buy that. I got to point out something fascinating, which is that Clifford went out of his way to not only wall the land bridge, but also kind of wall off that section of land yep. uh, west of the land bridge. And sure enough, the the transport ship came by with a vill, like he wanted to sneak into in that way and noticed the wall. I also have to say, you and know, those outposts, outposts too, everywhere. Yep. Yeah, so, so he sees he, it. He, yeah, or he he should. Yeah. You know, we don't know if he will, but he should. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He does see it. He pushes five villagers to chase down the one that's uh, been deployed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know. I don't know if that's going to be an effective trade because, again, you're idling effectively five villagers to deal with one villager. 30 seconds of that, and you've basically made up for the loss, loss but of a villager. Even then, though, even then, you are up eight vills. Yeah, now, that's true. What is true, on the other hand, is the Belgian has just hit the feudal age with the resources to go to castle. So, yeah, that it is looks also like there, true. there might be a. And it looks like the Belgian's going, going to get. You know, his, his vill has made it there. Um,. Has gotten away now. Outposts everywhere. I'm checking the line of sight right now. Red Clifford's got going to have a pretty good idea once the <laughs> Belgian decides to show whatever he's doing. But right now the villager is free. He can build. Yeah, I think the key thing is he did see it, so he yeah. has to know something is going on. And just that awareness by itself. Yeah, you know, it means mean it's not going lot. to be a surprise attack. And the other thing, too, and I think this is important, is while the Belgian did get a villager onto uh, Red Clifford's Island, he doesn't have wood to build any, yeah. at least not yet. So that villa's been idled this entire time. Uh, right. So he's not gotten anything so far, one. Two, it's going to be a minute, maybe two, at the least, before he's able to put even a single unit on, on the field. And here mm -hmm. we have Red Clifford. He's going to find him. First villager to throw a punch is going to have the advantage. Oh, wait a minute. Wait. He doesn't see it. Wait, he Does he not see it, or is he like pulling back? And why on earth? Why I on... Think, I, yep. The I, llamas I will not help you, Clifford. What's going on there? All right, let's see. We got... I cannot tell. It is... These are synchronized hits. Yeah. I don't know who wins I, this I fight. I have no idea who's going to win. I think red wins... Yeah, I think red wins. Oh, Certainly. Oh, the... Yeah, no, yeah, red wins now. Oh. Yeah. You know, part of me is kind of sad we didn't get to see the duel and who right, would win that. But right. I, I can't blame Clifford for, you know, securing his Ville's life and, and yeah. you know, keeping the They are playing these games for our benefit. That's right. dang sure. Right. Okay, in other news, we've got fire ships versus galleys. One fire ship versus uh, four, five galleys. Uh, uh, Hiram, I will admit to you that a fire galley will not beat five galleys. Yeah, you 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 should. So this is telling me Belgian will take control of the water. You know, we ought to settle this debate once and for all. Make like make a custom scenario: five galleys versus five fire galleys. 
I'll take the galleys, you take the fire galleys, and we'll so, just play it over and over and over again until we come into come to a consensus. Mm -hmm. Well, I think you're making a mistake, though, if you're waiting to build up five fire galleys and then move in with five, and then you... Oh, yeah, you know, absolutely. I, I'd, I'd again, want to hit with one, you know, and, and, yeah, and try again, to steamroll that way. 2v2, I favor five fire galleys. If, you're, if you just want to throw a couple out and try to do what you can with it, and it might be a lot, fire galleys all the way. If you're trying to control the water, mm -hmm. definitely regular galleys. I want to point this out because it might have it might have gone unnoticed. Uh, Red Clifford has built a mini base over yeah, on, on the, the east uh, side, yeah, on the eastern island. It's not just just a villager; it's a villager and a couple military buildings. And he's putting out Scout Cav. Mm -hmm. This is going to be significant for two reasons. Number one, he's going to be able to attack from an un uh, perhaps an unanticipated vector. Mm -hmm. Number two. He will be able to support that villager on that island. So as soon as he goes to castle, mm -hmm. he can put a town center there and lock down not only that second island, but the southern island as well, mm -hmm. because you have to go through a flank island to get to a uh, north or south island. So now this is fascinating to me, Clifford. What, what? Here's something I noticed. All right, this is my train of thought. First, Clifford is up three villagers over the Belgian, right? Second, the Belgian has the resources to go to Castle Age whenever he wants. And, and here it is. And He's he castling it. up now. Yeah. Uh, hey, I also want to point out, Red Clifford has a villager on the north end of the Belgian's island. Ooh. And a lumber camp. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So, Red Clifford has the, the villa advantage, but nowhere near the resources to go up to Castle. And I'm like, well, what's going on there? And then I notice all of these villas on stone... Red Clifford yep. has 800 stone in the bank right now. So clearly, yep. he's going to want to drop a castle. I did not talk about the Malay's unique unit. I believe that is the Karambit Warrior. Mm hmm. I think so. Is, is his thought, is he going to prioritize a castle for the castle itself to do like a castle drop sort of maneuver? Uh, maybe, maybe get revenge on the Belgian for what he did last game? Is he right. going to do it for the unique unit? Maybe some of those unique texts. Maybe he wants harbors and he wants, uh, you know, the, the 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 trash infantry. Getting, uh, let's see, that was a couple of kills there. Yeah. He's still got a ways to go to account for the amount he's uh, lost on the water. Yeah, the water he, he's using the market totally to get up the castle yeah. himself. Yep. Now, I think I think the advantage here isn't on Idleville time with these scouts. Mm -hmm. And it's yeah. not on uh it's not certainly not on killed death. It's the advantage of headspace. If he can get the Belgian to be in a I don't know, uh just have to focus too much on trying to keep his eco going while while being raided. Mm -hmm. He might have the opportunity of opening up advantages elsewhere, especially because he's so much farther behind. I mean not massively it's only 30 seconds but he is farther behind on the way to castle um zico still stronger though right so if he can if he can just keep the belgian on the back foot for a little while longer um he has a good chance of being able to there we go yep. yep more attacks we're gonna see at least one vill go down that's one down yeah definitely he, yeah he's, he's scaring vills off of wood and you know if the belgian is going archers right or spearmen here they cost wood yep yep so okay he did now just lose the scouts i'd say that was a worthy trade he probably could have gotten more out of that but right i like it i like it and here we go. i'm sorry i just want to point oh. out clifford is queuing up knights and battle elephants yeah and, and he's so again the malay have the cheaper battle elephants i think that he's going to be using the elephants as kind of a a semi battering ram i mean they're, they're good against other units they're also great against uh you know buildings as well and if he gets up enough of a a mass of elephants we could see him just brute yeah. force down the belgians units and yeah. the belgian he's got stone himself so if he's fast enough he can get a castle up maybe get some genoese crossbowmen maybe he focuses on spearmen who knows you know yes he does have the stone, but he doesn't have the wood. He's got the gold, mm -hmm. but he doesn't have the wood. Right. Uh, he he does throw down a castle of his castle own. Going up, yep. I think 
I think there's better placement. I don't think that was the best placement, placement, but you know, I'm not in this tournament, so what can I what can I say? Right. Right. Knights moving in, they wipe out that feudal age spearman without issue. There were two of them Indeed. there, they both went down. You know, if I look here, you've got the Belgian parked on this shallows and that's fine. You've got uh fishing ships operating right under their yeah. nose and a dock. Uh, and, you know, palisade walls and all sorts of mm -hmm. stuff. You could be doing some counter raiding of your own. Uh, but no, they're, they're just going to stay he parked there. I think they just want to hold it. the shallow. Yeah. He's playing like he just wants to hold the shallow. You know, if I'm him, I'll at least have one of them start punching holes in palisade walls. You know, make, make your opponent do something with it. I don't know if that's the stronger player. Castle comes up do. for our Italian player or our Belgian player. Yep. So castles both, and both on their home island. So we haven't seen a forward castle. Mm. A little Which... bit of a house wall and a quick wall, keeping the villagers safe, the Belgians' villagers safe from the knights. Now there are Perhaps a couple things I want to point out. Uh, I do want to say one thing that may not fact, depending on how this game goes, it may not factor in at all. But one aspect of water control that we haven't talked about is that all of the relics on the map are located on those two little starting center islands. Yeah. So you're not getting any relics without water control. And with the Belgian having total water control, that means at any point he could ferry Ville over, throw it on a monastery, and, you know, scoop up those relics uh, without issue. Um, yeah. That's something I want to keep in the back of our minds as a, as a possibility, depending on how this game goes. The right. other thing is Belgian's decision to go elephants is great if it works out, but it does scare me a little bit. They need some kind of backup because yeah. uh, spearmen and pikemen and halberdier and, and these anti-cavalry units, they not only do bonus damage against you know, cab units. They uh -oh. actually are programmed. The Red Clifford's going to lose his, yep. the villager yeah, he had deep in place. Yep. But, you know... Nothing you can do about it. Pikemen like this unit, they are actually programmed in the game to do additional bonus damage to elephants. So, yeah, you know, elephants are maybe one of the most hard-countered units in the game. If you happen to have anti-cav, whether that's, you know, pikemen or something like also... Uh, uh, you know, monks. You know, it's yeah. just they are so vulnerable if they are countered that it's a very dangerous thing to go into elephants. I suppose that the Malay bonus that makes them cheaper is kind of a nice, a nice aid here, but it worries me. We do see though, Clifford is up 14 villagers, so I'd say that the raiding, the pressure, has been helpful. Uh, he is on two town centers. Uh, the Belgian is still on his one TC. Yeah. Here's something else. The Belgian is giving up a second TC on that uh, on that eastern island, mm -hmm. but it's going to be not covered, but flanked significantly right. by Clifford's castle. So if he invests heavily into it, he could lose everything there. And if he doesn't, <coughs> it's not going to do him any good. We see him right. pulling the villagers away and building a castle of his own. Good call. This is exactly what he should do. Yeah, we just saw right there, I mean, we, we just traded one elephant for two pikemen. And when you factor in the cost of the units, I think even with the Malay bonus, I think that's a worthy trade. You know? Yeah, it definitely is. And Genoese crossbowmen. There we go. The Genoese crossbowmen is an archer unit that uh, has a little bit less range than their regular counterpart, but they do bonus damage against cavalry units. Uh, it's one of my favorite units in the game because there is so much uh, flexibility that you bring to the table with Genoese crossbowmen. And it's also fun when you're dealing with an opponent who doesn't know how the bonuses work. And so they end up sending cavalry at, at you because that's what normally works against archers. Cav wave after cav wave and the crossbowmen just wipe them out. And you're left going, well, what was the... You know, what, what what's going on? I don't understand. That moment is always a lot of fun as an Italian player. Right. He is about to sacrifice all of these units as they wade right... Oh! Oh! 
Reflexes, well done. Well done. Nice redirect. Good for yes, him. Yes, that was, Here's that the was other critical. Thing. He has one villager on that island and no TC. That villager goes down, his mm -hmm. foothold is temporary. Yep. And I dare say that they will go down. I mean, I suspect he will. He could pull away now. Yeah, now, now that the. Uh, now that we see the crossbow, yeah, look at this. He's going to go to the castle, and I expect he will build a town center. No, he's going to build a level camp. He's taunting I the Belgian. That, yeah. Come, come deal with this villager Man, now. That's playing with fire. Yeah, that's I, playing I, with fire. I think not. Not that the Belgian necessarily can know this, but it would be worth it to lose maybe two or three of these guys to take out the one villager on this side of the map. Absolutely true. Absolutely true. Both players going up to the Imperial Age. Now we have the Red Clifford with the TC on the Southern Island. So he's his expansion is more expansive, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. Red, Red Clifford's going to get up to Imp a little faster, oh, yes, which means he's going to be able to get out Trebs faster. Right. And he's got... I don't know if he'll have the gold in time. He should. Um, but if he can get out even a single Treb, then that'll be enough to probably turn his foothold on that uh, on that Easter island, Eastern island um, into control. Otherwise... Easter island there. Huh. I think it's going to lose... Yeah, Easter island. Right. It's all the stone, you know? Don't you see all that stone there? Yeah, me neither. Little mod that turns the stone piles into little Maui heads. <laughs> what I find fascinating... So again, Clifford is up in the Ville Count. And, I, and I'm watching his research coming in. And he's picking a little bit of everything. He's got some archer armor upgrades, but he just got squires. And then he got elite skirm. And he's just doing a little bit of everything. I have no idea what his long-term game plan is. I suspect... I don't know if he knows. Yeah. I, I suspect that we're going to be seeing him go into those trash infantry. Yeah. I agree. Here's the thing. With the Italians... Ooh. Ooh, I wait, think I'm so almost... sorry. I'm so sorry. We got an, a mangonel on the east uh, yeah, trying I'm to take down the town center. Go ahead. Um, He needs to get a treb up. A treb up under the cover mm -hmm. of that town center... Yep. Yeah, there we go. Treb. Yep. Treb coming in, but but the Belgian already has a Treb. You know, if it was fire for fire right now, the Belgian would win. Oh, I'm sorry. I I thought that was the Treb coming in for Red Clifford, and it isn't. No, yeah, we have... I think the Belgian is the one player prioritizing the Treb war. The... This could be a huge mistake for Red Clipper. <laughs> now, to his credit, it is an awkward position for the Belgian as well because he he has the Mangonels and, and they're there to counter the Genoese crossbowmen. But he can't really deal with the trebuchets either. I don't know. This he is... might be able to get a shot. Maybe if, if he can get shots, yeah. If you can get shots on that trebuchet. Oh, uh, here what? But yeah, the crossbowmen come out to counter Cro that. Crossbowmen versus. Stay in trade. Oh, right, good we got some split. we got some split moves. Let's see. So we're gonna see some micro battles here. Micro, 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 micro. 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 Yep. Okay, one mangonel down. Castle down, and the okay, town okay. center will remain. Yep. Now, he did take out one Treb. Gotta give him credit for that, but... Yeah, this is a tough situation right now. It certainly is. I, I don't know what you do here. Again, because of he's put a TC on that southern island, and because he's got... He does have the Ville advantage. The game is not won or lost on this island. Mm -hmm. Like, this is where the fight is currently happening. But it is yep. not won or lost on this island. That's that's first of all. Second of all, yes, he's lost his villager. Here it is. Yes, he's lost his castle. We have, he has revealed his hand right here. He's researching forced levy. 
And you see, if you look back at his home base, uh, Red Clifford has up. He's going to have up seven barracks. Okay. So, yep. All in on an infantry swarm. Now, what I'm hating, this is this is making my skin itch, is he ha he is not researching any of his blacksmith technologies for his infantry while he's doing all of this, um, and that that's surprising to me. Like, I, you know, there's there, I, I I guess he doesn't have a lot of food right now, and that's another thing he needs to get a lot more food up, which he is doing yeah. even as we speak, but. Um, go ahead and start your blacksmith up on those infantry techs. Because you are really going to want those if you go all in on infantry. We just saw the Belgian come in with, I think it was cannon galleon or elite cannon galleon. He's going to attack into gunpowder. Yep. Try that. And that, wow, that will deal with not just one, but both of the castles that Red Clifford yeah. has in play. If he's able to keep it alive. And considering right now he has not just, you know, average, but total naval dominance, mm -hmm. uh, he will probably be able to keep those alive. It'd be very hard to counter. Yep. Yep. And that means that we can say goodbye to this castle on the coast. I think probably both castles, actually, are yeah. in, in range. Both castles, I say, yeah. I feel like at this point... Clifford has an eco lead, but I don't know how much that matters. Both players yeah. have about 100 vils. Um, and I think that the Belgian's eco is probably better balanced. Uh, Clifford yeah. has thousands of gold being unused right now, which is funny because he's going to go into trash infantry, so he's not even going to use the gold there. He needs to be evening out his eco. I think he's trying to do that right now. First shots from the uh, from the cannon gallery. I was a, here. They are. Yeah, I was about to say. I think the question is who fires first, and we see opening salvos I, from the Belgian. I think that's a mistake. Don't open up with your cannon galleons on an archery range. Open up on a castle. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because now Red Clifford knows exactly what he's dealing with here, and now he knows he's on a timer. Right. Don't tell your opponent they're on a timer until you're ready to make them pay. Uh, in I, other news, yep. Red Clifford has gone with his horseshoe wall on other shallows as well. But again, we've got cannon galleons. Those walls aren't aren't going to mean anything to a cannon galleon. Clifford going into fast fire ships. So he's he's continuing to represent my side of the debate, and uh, we're going to see if maybe he can get up enough uh, fire ships to turn the naval tide. I, I will say, if nothing else, this is proving your point where if I were advising Clifford, I'd be saying, or I'm sorry, if I were advising the Belgian, I'd be saying, wait until you have, you know, however many five, six cannon galleons, and then just unload on those priority targets. Don't give him time to respond. Yeah. I don't know if it's going to work, but Clifford is going to try to respond with a Navy pushback, and you haven't really done a lot of damage yet. Yeah, exactly. Now, you, you've got knocked down a couple walls, which is is fine. Mm -hmm. um, he's knocking down a dock here. But as far as a tactical, leverageable advantage, like even if he does knock a hole in the wall and start pushing troops through, well, Red Clifford has an army. It's not an enormous army, but he does have one. We do see in the south there was a fire ship that uh, did a little bit of damage to a galleon, but I don't think that there were any losses for yeah. the Belgian. And uh, galley beats see. fire galleys if you're willing to micro. Yeah, it's we just... got two cannon galleons down there as well. So this castle in the south, even though right now the stables are the ones going down, but I think uh, yeah, the castle won't be long. For yeah, the stables either. are going down now. Now look <coughs> at this. He's bringing down his his mm. two-handed swordsman to try to deal with these ships. That could work. Which it Only really could. have feudal blacksmith upgrades. I hate it. Why? I hate it. I hate it. Having said that, the Belgian's not responding. The yep. Oh, oh. Two, three, four? Nope, just nope. three. But three boy. ships go down. But boy, yeah, exactly right. Good play. Mm -hmm. Transport ships moving in from the Belgian to that island. I don't know what he intends to do, but something, maybe. I don't know. 
probably mess with some fishing ships. Yeah, with a transport ship? <laughs> That's what I'm saying, like from earlier. Yeah, right. Okay, uh, infantry moving up north, trying the same tactic. The question is, how fast does the Belgian respond? Because all he has to do is move the ships out from this bridge, and he can fire with impunity. But instead, you know, I don't know if he realizes. He that does he's not being realize. There. Yeah, Th that and, northern unless, fleet goes down. Yeah, and here's a lesson. Okay, you don't have to be on the shallows to cover it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. All he had to do is move the navy just south a little ways, and he can still fire at things, but... He tries to get a quick wall up. It's not... Well, he does get a quick wall up, but it's not going to stay up. Mm -hmm. Look at... Look that. at how tight this score is. Yeah. Look at look at how tight... Neck and neck. Man, neck and neck. He, he was moving into this fight with almost 40 infantry, a and yeah. we've got... Four trebs coming in too, so uh, yeah. Clifford is so, definitely going for the death blow here. Yeah, absolutely. On the other hand, can Galleon on his castle back home? Mm -hmm. That's the first one, and I think I'm pretty sure the second one's at it's within range. So, you know, we've got artillery v artillery, and we're slipping punches. We're not we're not trading punches. So, we'll see what how I would that goes. love to see from Clifford is for him to pop out one trebuchet and just target the cannon Galleon. Yeah. Uh, now I don't. I don't think that's a great idea. A mm -hmm. cannon galleon. Yeah, you can micro a treb. Um, but a cannon galleon can take down a treb pretty decently. Because no, I, I agree. While... Like if it were if it were a fully healed one v one, I that would be a, a bad call. But because this cannon galleon is down to thirty eight HP, I, I I think that a single hit probably would take it out. While I grant that. It's easier to target a trebuchet that cannot move than a cannon galleon that can. You're right. more likely to my, lose the trebuchet than you My are theory is that with everything going on up north, he's not going to micro it. Yeah. We, we've already seen he's not going to micro his ships I, that I'd well. I'd put out a fire ship and deal with the cannon galleon first. Uh, I mean, we just saw the Belgian. I, I just want to point this out. Belgian is going into bombard cannons as well. And remember, yeah. the Italians get cheaper gunpowder units, so that includes mm. the Bombard Cannon at the Siege Workshop and the Cannon Galleons on the water. These are cheaper units yep. for him. Uh, so that's a cool little bonus. Um, having said that, when you have trash infantry, they're able to just sort of move in and swarm. Uh, you know what I hate? So the Genoese crossbowmen as archers are doing, you know, they'll do well against infantry, right? So what is your backup to support your infantry? Well, you're going to go Elite Battle Elephant, but they're just going to get more damage done to them by the Genoese Crossbowman. Yeah. Let's, he let's does watch have some skirmishers, mm -hmm. okay? Yes, he needs some to use Some skirmishers, them. that's a big deal. Yes. He needs to target the archers with the skirmishers, not the infantry. Right. <coughs> We do see a lot of bonus damage on those elephants. Yeah, we do. Yeah. I Doc do goes down for the Belgian, but I don't think that's a big deal. You got all those trebs. They're attacking targets, but they're not terribly opportune targets. We did see some fighting in the southern island. Uh, Belgian sent some Genoese crossbowmen to try to deal with that town center, but they got driven now, off. Now, here we have the Italian infantry on the skirmishers and the, the Italian archers on the infantry. Which is exactly, exactly the way you'd want this to go. Want. Yeah. Now, if, if Clifford could just swap that, he would be in a really good position. Yeah. Looks like he's trying to go for the eco kills, mm -hmm. which I, I think is not a good idea. Like, mm -hmm. you might get them, but you're going to pay more than, than you re receive. Right. He is scouting out a bit of the enemy, which, okay. Right. There you have it. Red Clifford going archer armor and pikeman. Or halberdier. No, pikeman. Which is a little surprising to me. Why would you go pikeman? I don't know. Uh, one thing I will say that I find... I, I do want to point this out. Because I, I think we're, we're seeing in the KD that the Belgian is, is winning right now. 170 yeah. kills, only 110 deaths. But remember that... Like, everything that we see here, army-wise, is trash. So... Yeah. 
Uh, it's just food and wood that Clifford is using. Every unit that the Belgian loses here is gold yeah. down the drain. And if you look at the gold stockpiled, you can definitely see that effect play out. Right. Right. So I, I think even though... Well, I, I take it back. I mean, Clifford has taken control of the water. So uh, I, I think my analysis early on is shaping up where if the game goes long and late, I think Clifford wins this. Yeah. I think you're right. I'm a little surprised that the game has been allowed to go on this long. Yeah. I think the Belgian definitely had the advantage, a significant advantage. And mm. he's teching his main army into something that's counterable by trash, which is, again, it's it's a little surprising. You got 49, uh, well, 39, sorry. Genoese crossbowmen, and yeah, that'll do with Cav just fine, but a bunch of skirmishers will mop that up, no mm. problem. Yep. You're supporting those uh, those archers with champions. We okay. see the Pavis Battle unique element tech will deal with that, no problem. has just come in for the Belgian, which gives all of his archers, including his Genoese crossbowmen, uh, an additional one melee and one pierce armor. So uh, they should be a little bit hardier, a little bit tougher to kill. We will see. Clifford is slipping in with a fire a fire galley to deal with a couple of those cannon galleons. He's mm -hmm. not microwing it, which you need to do. Uh, that fire galley will probably go down, but probably take a, yep, he's taking a cannon galleon with him. More fighting. Ooh, we're getting something of a break in from the Belgian. Now, he has no siege backing this up, so I don't know how much he can do here, but he is pushing in. Yep. With an army of Genoese crossbowmen. 34 to be precise. Now the problem <coughs> with that is they are, yes, if you start running Cav at them, they, they'll they deal with the Cav pretty effectively. But if you're able to outrange them with skirmishers or with castles or with pretty much anything, uh, you can take them down. And it looks to be a whittling game going on. The other thing worth pointing out for the Malay, if they get the tech that turns their uh, to where their their cast, or I'm sorry, their docks can shoot arrows, kind of like a castle, right. which they had picked you up. Can start, yep, you can start using docks to fortify the shallows, and those docks mm -hmm. can start killing archers. Get a couple docks up, and uh, suddenly that that uh, I think we have a critical moment happening here. Uh, a trebuchet yeah, up, trying to take out this castle. Fire Gala is coming in to knock out the Trebs. Genoese crossbowmen on the on the ships. Okay, ships are down. Now they've got to defend the Trebs from these elite battle elephants. That's what they're I designed think they're to, be do. Able to do. It. They're bottlenecked. Those elephants are bottlenecked and they're being yep. caught up in the in the yep. champions that are coming down. You know what I wish we could see? Condottiero. Or Condottieri. I don't think, uh, I mean, it wouldn't make sense in this case because the Condottieri have a, a bonus against gunpowder units, and we don't see the Malay going into gunpowder, but... Right. I just like unique units. I want to see more unique units. Right. Now we have Defensive three, trebs. Is that three four. trebs. It's yeah, four, I four like trebs. that. Yep. No way this castle, castle goes down is, now. Yeah. And no, it, it might. Two, yeah, okay. At this now point, at this point, everything that... The Belgian needs to pull out. Everything that he's losing, it's more gold down the drain, more food down the yep. drain. More... The resources matter more here for the Italian than the Malay. Well, and look, uh, Clifford can put just his fire galleys on that shallows and start yep. dealing with the dream. Yep. Um, they can try to attack the fire galleys, but they're streaming in. It's not a horde. They can't attack the way they could if you know it were a right, block. Right. And what that means is, is you're going to cut off the reinforcements, isolate what's on the island, 
and boom, we've got a real problem. Looking at the score, it's already closing a lot faster than you would have thought possible, or I would have thought. Now, uh, something that I don't know. Uh, even you know, the KD is closing, Kaiser. Take a look at that. Wow, yeah, now we're down to 50, uh, 50 points. Yeah, we were close to 100, like 70, 80. Now we're, now we're down to 50. KD right. is dropping. Right. And, and something I'm, I'm going to go ahead and really complain about this because, I mean, these are these two finalists. They they both have probably been on this map by now. Yeah. Um, and they started the game on these islands, so they know this fact. There are two, four relics just sitting there, wait, waiting to be claimed. Both players have had control of the water at one point or another. I'm yeah. shocked that no one's taken the time to uh, go ahead and pick those up. We see, what is that? Is that is Onager? It at least. Yeah, Onager. It's Onager on the field. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, nice. Nice closing. split move there from the Belgian. Yeah. Beautiful plays by both players. I just, yeah. I like watching. I like watching players who know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Especially mm -hmm. when they're better than me and these two are. On the other hand, though, not on the other hand, just while that's going on, you know, we're watching these champions streaming in to the, di you know, to the kill zone. Mm -hmm. And they're just going in to die. Yep. The KD is now down by 20. And here is the number. 162 to 4,732. Yep. You know, it's the Belgian is on his last little bit of gold. He's still got uh, 800 times nine. Yeah, so that's a like, lot of gold he I mean, could get. Yeah, I mean, but it's he not probably won't. Right. Right. What is depathing? Yeah, I don't know exactly what he's talking about, but. Anyway. So if you look, the Belgian's now gone from gold units. It looks like he's building trash cav. He's on his last leg, those trash cav. They're not going to be able to punch through skirms. I mean, like he, they'll be able to kite, but not punch. I mean, if it were just skirms, I would, I'd give it to the cav. But you're dealing with, again trash infantry you know these are whatever these are two-handed swordsmen um yeah. two-handed swordsmen normally will beat scouts you know they they are trash yeah. killers that's what they're good at the fact that they don't cost gold on top of that is just the icing on the cake yeah uh i i, I don't see if, if if you're in a situation where you're needing to build trash units and you're up against malay i think you've just lost it's it's game over yeah Yeah, I, I would go so far as to say it is game. I don't know if you are the Belgian. Like, uh, un unless maybe relic victory is enabled. You come in, you steal the relics, you build a monastery deep in the back of your base, and hold. Other than that, it is game here. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what you do. And, you know, he's streaming these light cav in, and he's got to do something. You know he feels like he's got to do something, but pulling in five light cav... You know exactly what's going to happen. If they don't close, they'll be skirmed to death. If they do close, they'll be champed to death. Right. Like, or two-handed swordsmen, I guess. Like, there's not much available to you. I suppose you could go something, if you had gold, you could go something like Scorps, maybe. Yeah, and, and we do see, I mean, Clifford is pulling out Halberdier now just to make sure that, no, I'm uh, not. I'm not knocking Clifford at all because he's, it's clearly working. I do got to say though, you're floating six thousand. That's mm. a lot of gold. Either pull some guys onto food and flood, or uh, do something with that gold. In my opinion, even if what you're doing with that gold is driving up the price of stone. Yeah, I, I, and normally I agree. Like you know, you don't want to be floating resources. I kind of feel like there might be a virtue in just saving the gold until you get to a place where you know your opponent has nothing but trash left, and then 
you hit him with your own all gold comp. Yeah, um, but I see but a possibility. The game is there. Often, yeah, I get that. I even agree. It's what I tend to do in jujitsu as in AOE, leading the opponent and then hitting with your knockout moves. I mm -hmm. get that. But I think that so many times the game is decided before you get to that point. Like, if you're able to beat them without using gold, how much faster would it have been if you had used gold, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking here, you know, one or two cannon galleons on that shore. Being able yeah. to punch into the buildings, knocking down stables, even houses. Um, <coughs> the castle down in the, uh, on the, I guess, the eastern island. You know, you could be doing so much with just yeah. a little gold. And it's not like you're pop capped. Well, I suppose he is close to pop capped. It's not like you have to be pop capped. Right. You know, two cannon galleons would make a big difference in this fight. Not that not that it would probably end cha or change the ending, but it would make it happen a lot faster. Hmm. I'm noticing the stable here that only has 60 HP, but because it's not being knocked down, it's continuing to produce a SAR. You know, and it's like all he has to do is target the stable for just a second and... Yeah. Yep. On the flip side, he's bleeding his food with it. Yeah. You know, that Hussar yeah, yeah, yeah. that, that pops out isn't going to do much. It's going to cost food. And it's not like the Belgian has food to spare. I mean, it's not like the, the Cliff or Red Clifford has food to spare. But, mm -hmm. you know, he can afford to bleed. You are exactly off. right. I want to point back, pull back to what you just said a second ago, because you're exactly right that with Clifford having taken total naval control, I was saying it back when the Belgian had control, but... You know, now Clifford has control. Why are you not going into, um, you know, just just naval dominance and destroying so many of these buildings from the comfort of the sea? You know, you don't have to lose any yeah. units. And uh, yeah. again, what what he's doing is working for him. So maybe he's thinking, you know, don't change the tactics when they're when they're ahead. But the Malay, but still. I want to double check this. I want to make sure that they get cannon galleon. They do. They do get, uh, in fact, they get Elite Cannon Galleons. So, uh, you can just get out a couple of Elite Cannon Galleons, and right there, he's able to knock down both castles. All of these production buildings on the coast go down. There's so much you could be doing just with naval control. Yeah, exactly so. And the Belgian is calling the GG. Now, and I was about to say this right before you you know, right before the Belgian called. It's not like it's not working, right? So it's not yeah. like this throwing cannon galleons is going to be the difference between victory and not victory. Right. At the same time, though, it's a difference between winning in five minutes versus winning in 20. Right, right. Yeah, no, I, I think that there were opportunities there to... From, from both players, I think there was a moment where the Belgian was winning, and if he had been yeah. a little bit more decisive, uh, I think that he could have you know, struck with that power spike and won the game. Uh, now that Red Clifford had the lead, uh, he ultimately pulls it off, of course. It worked for him. Uh, and that is a typical Malay play. Get to that post-Imperial game, yeah. bleed your opponent dry, and then just overwhelm him. So uh, I think part of that is just the strategy of going Malay. But, right. uh, you know, that was something where he totally could have... Uh, I think I think he could have won it he, he could have won sooner and won a little bit more effectively just by getting a couple of cannon galleons out and knocking things down as he was continuing to use his wave strategy at the same time. Yeah, exactly so. Well, that's game two for Clifford. Let's jump right into game three. And here we are, game three. We've got Clifford in the orange playing as the Indians against the Belgian in the teal playing as the Japanese. And they're playing on Graupel. So I got to say, Hiram, this is giving me flashbacks to my very first set against Fede Almanco. Uh, he I went, was going to say. Uh -huh, he went Indians on Graupel, uh, used the uh, the lake fish to devastating effect combined with Scout Cav uh, and I mean, really just cleaned my clock on this map. So I'm wondering whether we're going to see Clifford uh, here in the finals using the same kind of strategy 
uh, against the Belgian. I'm yeah, I don't know. Go ahead. I said, yeah, I don't know. I do want to comment in the opening uh, in the opening moments that they're, the players are almost mirroring each other, mm-hmm. um, and it's it's kind of resulting in a in an almost humorous play where they're both pulling the sheep or the cows in this case from the other opponent's section of the map first. Right. Um, I don't know how that'll pan out totally because there's a world in which, you know, that means that all of the cows win by one of one or the other's uh transport ships and are thus lost mm-hmm. but uh it's just interesting in the pathing and the results that the result that that's taking seems like both right. players are using their their earned cows to scout though which is what they should do mm-hmm. yeah i mean uh, y- you know I, I do like that they are scouting you're going to get a lot of important information including your where your opponent's base is but i do have to say at the same time i'm, I'm missing out on tom's Lovely technique of just garrisoning the cows in the uh, the transport ships and being able to get all of that food early on. Uh, exactly. I do love that. I love that. I do love I that it. too. I think the scouting is better. Not Yeah. Not necessarily because you're going to find something terribly useful. You know, you can't number one, there aren't, to my knowledge, any other cows or equivalent sheep or equivalent on the on the center of the map that you could go in and claim. Two any and all boar are going to be pretty much too far away from your TC to lure. Three, yeah, you can locate some resources, some wood, some gold, some stone. But for the most part, that's, you know, your strategy is not going to be based on the location of those resources. Mm-hmm. So on the other hand, assuming that they don't get claimed by something else, and it would be hard for them to be claimed by something else since we don't have scout cap in the game, you know, you can either bring them back to the base having gained nothing, or you can have them walk, walk back. I mean, it's not like the villagers at your home base can harvest more than one at a time. Right. Right. That's true. Let's talk a little about the sieves here. I've already mentioned, and of course, uh, YouTube audience, if you have uh, watched my games against Fede Almanco, you sort of already know about the the Indian strengths, the, the, the faster uh, fishing villagers here. Uh, you also have the scouts with extra pierce armor. Um, and I believe, is that true for the camels as well? I want to say the camels also get additional armor for the Indians. Um, so we do have a, a, some good anti-cav options from the Indians. The Japanese... Just I've, a moment here, I've got a tech issue. Sure. Uh, while you're figuring that out, the Japanese kind of surprised me as a choice for Graupel. And the reason why is... When I think Nomad and Japanese, the first thing I think of is their bonus for their fishing ships. They collect uh, fish faster, if I remember correctly. I'm going to go ahead and double check that. But I do believe that the Japanese get... um, They do have faster collecting fishing ships. And that's great on some of the maps that are a part of this tournament. But Graupel and that center ring doesn't really have a lot in the way of fish. So that seems a little bit of a waste to have picked Japanese here. Now, on top of that, you you do have some great options. Uh, You do have the fact that their infantry attack 33% faster starting in the Feudal Age. So if he goes for like a men-at-arms rush or, you know, if we're seeing Japanese infantry into the, uh, you know, the Castle Age, the Imperial Age, there are going to be some nice bonuses there. That means their spearmen you know are think... doubly effective Go ahead. against camels. Yeah. So you got that. Uh, you do have the the 50% cheaper mills, lumber camps, mining camps. That probably means that he can get a fishing ship out right away, or at least cheaper than he otherwise would. Uh, galleys have additional line of sight. So there's some cool water bonuses. Uh, you do have some cool... Uh, good flexibility and options with the Japanese, but... It seems like their power spike might be wasted on this map. Am I wrong, Hiram? You know, I don't know. Here's the thing. Number one, the Japanese trebuchets, I won't say they're second to none. The British trebuchets, or the Britons with Warwolf, they're pretty dang good, especially against units. Mm. But if you've ever played with Japanese trebuchets and their unique technology, you can shoot and move pretty dang effectively. Mm -hmm. And I have learned through painful, painful, painful experience, not to underestimate that. Mm -hmm. So you get a decent power spike 
in through the ages due to your infantry attacking faster. And that applies to offensive as well as defensive. You know, if you're going men at arms and if you're going for a men at arms rush or whatever, that applies. If you're going for defensive spears against uh, against a captive, that applies. Mm-hmm. Um, so you get you get decent flexibility there. And then when you get to late game, treb war v tre- or treb v treb and treb war, you can often win just on that unpacked yeah. fire fast bonus. So I don't think it's a question of when the power spikes hit, but how they're leveraged, which I know is a little bit of a cheese answer, mm-hmm. but I don't know, especially with the Japanese. They seem it seems to be more of a less uh, obvious of advantages, mm-hmm. but more about how they're leveraged. One thing I will be interested in seeing is, do we see Clifford go heavy into the scout cav? Uh, first, maybe just as a raiding option, but then second, if if the Belgian decides to go infantry, I'm sorry, uh, archers then that would make a lot of sense to go scout cav as a response to Japanese archers. Uh, yeah. If he, the, I think the thing that's sort of in the back of my mind is if you're not taking advantage of the scout cav, then what the Indians claim to fame is, is their, um, their camels are better than normal, but camels are an anti cav unit. The Indians have some bonuses to make them a little bit more generalist than normal. But they're still, at best, a diet knight. Right. You know? And so I don't know... I don't know that... Like, you'd love to go Indians against the Franks or some other civilization that will go heavy into knights. But because of the flexibility of the Japanese, I don't. that aspect of the Indian Civ might also be wasted on this map. I don't know how this, the picking... This matchup. Yeah. I don't know how the picking and drafting does. There's a world in which the Japanese was picked for just such a reason. This is a map that, you know, all nomad maps have some fishing. Um, This one less than a lot. I don't know about most, but at least a lot. Um, I wonder if if the Japanese was picked into Mm -hmm. uh, this map because he expected his opponent to anticipate cavalry and so is choosing infantry. I truly don't know. Yeah. I have neither but, do I. You know, faints within faints within faints. Something that is surprising me, and maybe this is because of the shore fish. I, I think that's what it is, is both players are prioritizing the shore fish, and this makes a lot of sense for the Indian player. It makes sense for a generic sieve like with the Japanese as well. Uh, we're only seeing four fishing ships in the center of the map for teal, three fishing ships from the Indian player in the orange. Um, so not a lot of focus or priority being placed in this center lake location. I expect we won't see a lot of fighting over the, the center waters. You know, what? I, and I think that's the right play. You mm-hmm. know, there's not enough fish in this lake to be worth fighting for. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of map. In fact, most of the map is just out of range of naval power. So if you have naval naval supremacy, so what? Most of the food is on the fringe. I'm sorry, I got to point this um, out. Red Clifford uh, is fast castling. He's running up to the castle edge right now. Uh, the Belgian behind. Uh, I'm noticing two and a half minutes of idle TC time. And that means that he's a little bit down on the bill counts. He's going to take a little while to get up to castle edge. So there's a, a moment where Clifford hits... Oh, and as I say that, the Belgian has Japanese swordsmen on the field scouting, maybe putting some pressure down. But I think there's going to be a a critical moment as soon as Clifford hits castle where we're asking ourselves the question, what are you doing with that castle age upgrade? And I think we're going to see pressure. Yeah, I agree. Here's the thing. Like, that is three swordsmen, but it's only three men at arms. Yeah. You know, that's, that's easy enough to wall out. Yeah. You're going to drive some. It's not idle time because they're building walls. You're going to drive some non-ego time. I'll just put it that way. Mm-hmm. But unless you find a hole in that wall, and I don't think you're going to, you're not going to get much for that. Well, here's the thing about the stone. Now, I don't know if he used all of it right here. Maybe he sold some in order to, to you know, go up to Castle Age faster. But notice how Red Clifford now has no stone. He's got 22 stone. Yeah. So... I think by putting that pressure on and forcing him to build up the walls, that means that one option that Clifford does not have 
is to fast castle into a three TC Vilboom, right? Okay, now that is now that is true. On the flip side, Belgian's going up to castle. Yep. Okay. On the flip side, what gold have you spent in order to make that happen? That's what fifteen. Yeah. Correct me. Is it fifteen gold a person? I think that is correct. Yeah. You're spending 45 gold in order to get your opponent to spend 150 stone. And that seems like a good trade until you realize that stone is going to be effective for the rest of the game. Mm -hmm. Especially, you know, because it'll deal with, or because it'll it'll prevent raiding. Um, it locks, no, not entirely, obviously. You can bust through it, but you're not going to bust through it quickly. Um, so it's not like... He's spent it and it's gone in the same sense that a cav rush, or I'm sorry, a scout rush that fails and the scouts die is gone. Mm. That stone is spent, but it's still there. And if you're if okay. you're going to try to raid with infantry, the last thing you want is to get your opponent to you know put up stone walls in defense because well, now what? Now you've got to bring siege to bear, or a heck of a lot of infantry. So, you know, I spoke too soon because I was saying, like, oh, he's, he's used up the stone. That means that he can't, you know, do anything. But here we do see Clifford's choice. I was wondering, what are you going to do as soon as you cast the Lage? And he has elected to build a second town center. So now we've got two TCs against one. And that will give... I think that combined with the fishing eco, if Clifford stays on top of using the, the lake fish means yeah he's gonna have a pretty solid economy going on here well and look at how many villagers are on stone like he spent that stone yeah but it's only a couple hundred stone mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um he's already made up that difference and he's got six people on it it's not going to be long before he's able to get up a castle now we've got a stable coming up for clifford and we do see Belgian going into crossbowman. He's, he also has the attack upgrade, so I'm thinking that we're going to see crossbowman as his main unit of choice. Yeah. Jap arch archers should not be underestimated. Mm -hmm. They're good. They're good. I'm a little curious as to why. I mean, maybe. But he's going camels. Maybe because, you know, I'm Indians, that's my thing, or that's one of my things. Right, I was thinking the exact same thing. But it doesn't seem to be called for. Number one, your opponent hasn't shown any kind of propensity to go cap. Number two, yeah, the camels are better, but a camel versus knight against infantry, I'd still take the knight. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's the right play. I, then I, again, like I said. For what it's worth, I will just confirm, because I, I just I pulled up the Indian bonuses. Their stable units get plus one Pierce armor in Castle Age and plus two Pierce armor in the Imperial Age. So okay. the camels will benefit from extra Pierce armor if it comes into a camel versus archer fight. Uh, but I think that the scouts are faster, and I think it'll be more cost effective to just go scouts uh, against yeah, archer. I agree. Especially because that frees you to put that gold into your second mainline unit. So, right. Scouts and then Siege, for instance, against Archer. A couple Manganels or, or equivalent versus Camels. I don't know. They do have a team bonus, too, that gives their Camels plus four attack against buildings. That, that's the thing that makes them die at nights, is they are pretty good at yeah. knocking down buildings. Um, or at least better than they would be otherwise. Yeah. Um, How do they compare against knights for knocking down buildings? Are they faster than knights? I don't believe they are. Now, that's I'm running yeah. from memory. I could be mistaken. but That was my takeaway as well. It that, goes from an, ab an abysmal comparison to a really not that bad, but knights are still technically better. Yeah, exactly. So if you if you want, leave a comment in the video telling us we're wrong. Go, you know, pull up your Spirit of the Law video and and show me yeah. where you know Indian camels actually do a better job than knights at taking down buildings. I'm 
I'm sure that info's out there. Uh, or, or alternatively, don't support it at all. Just, just scream it really loud in all caps. Right. Yeah, that, that's an option too. You can definitely go for that. Uh, you shouldn't. That, that's not being a, you know, a good YouTube commenter, decent human being. But you can do that if you want. Okay, so we've got those camels moving in to try to raid, but they're going to go down against the crossbowmen, or they're going to retreat. They're going to pull back. That's that is the right choice. So this is good. I mean, Clifford now has some info on the strategy Belgian has chosen. He can pull yep. back and decide what he wants to do now. Now look at this here. So the Belgian has chosen hmm. to not wall himself in, but wall Red Clifford in. And I like this. I, like I that really a lot too. like this. On the flip side, the Belgian has, I'm sorry, Clifford has pulled out a bunch mm -hmm. of villagers and he's building a second TC. So that's not really going to hold. In addition, uh, well, not to mention the, you know, the castle, the castle coming up, right? Yeah. And now, the camels will come back and knock out that vill. This wall's not standing up. Yeah. I don't think that castle is terribly optimally located. I'd rather see it pushed forward just I a agree little with bit. You. Yep. Cover both the stole, stone and the gold. Yep. In addition, a lot of its firing radius is blocked out by the edge of the map, and that's just it's just one of the things I don't like to see. Yeah. Um it bothers me. But, you know, hey, it is going to to keep that particular area of the map open. Uh, otherwise, the Belgians moved his crossbowmen in to deal with that southern mm -hmm. TC, and they outrange it, so... Huh. Interesting. I wonder what Clifford's response would be. Yeah, I wonder. I mean, he can always garrison those villagers in the town center, but that, that doesn't, you know, fix the issue that only stalls it. Right. Seven range versus six range. I'm just really surprised that we're not seeing more military from Clifford. This is almost yeah. like a repeat of the last game in a way where it took the Malay player a long time. He was focusing on economy and it worked for him, but it took a long time before he got the military out. Same thing here. And look at this. He's researching crossbowmen. He wants to go archer versus archer. Well, I say that. He canceled the upgrade. Maybe he had intended to build Skirm. I don't know. Maybe. But he's not building Skirm right now. He's not building anything. Yeah. Well, he's got the Fletching upgrade. So maybe that's for his castles. I don't know. Who knows? Hmm. Well, without I'm any kind of response, surprised. this town center will go down. Yeah. I'm a little surprised he hasn't used his castle to try to knock down some of this remaining wall. Not that it's a big deal, but it's free attack. You might as well open up a hole when you can. Let's talk eco for a sec. In a oh. lot of ways, we're seeing the same kind of effect as we had last game. Mm -hmm. We've got... Clifford's floating 3,300, 3,400 gold right. versus 940. 27 on gold versus 16. Um, I mean, he's got the bigger economy in general, but looking at the, the amount of resources being floated, he's got enough for a second castle. Yeah, I, uh, I, I, was, I think I was muted. <laughs> Because I, yeah, one one of those moments again where I uh, I was commenting the exact same thing like it is shaping up a lot like the last game, um, we do see Clifford just going all in on the eco, really not doing much of anything military wise. Yeah. Um, okay. Belgian look at this. Look at look at the northern area. Mm -hmm. Clifford moving forward to build a town center with looks They're like going to be intercepted. Eight yeah. bills. There were eleven bills. Uh, the Belgian killed three of them. And so now this town center is not going to go up. And even if it did, there's rams already built. Right. And right and right now, as this battle starts, uh, Clifford is up almost 20 vills. I think it's eight, 18 vills, something like that. But mm -hmm. if he loses eight here, that's a pretty significant decrease. Ooh, yeah. he's, he's going to fight? I don't think that works for him. I don't think it works for him either. I mean, it's almost gotten one archer. Yeah, but... 
so okay uh you got a battering ram this whole endeavor goes down i think he's stalling i don't think he's actually yeah. trying i don't know he might be trying to get it up now, um, we, we do see Clifford going into the Imperial Age, so maybe his thought process is get to Imp. Yeah. And then... And he's also dropping a castle down on that wall up there, so... Okay. Mm -hmm. He's he's developed for himself... It's almost the opposite of Fede Almanco. You know, it's funny, because they're playing the same Civ, but different approaches. Clifford has yeah. developed for himself a really solid... Uh, you know, he's, he's turtling up. He's got a really solid base. If the Belgian wants to go any further, he's gonna need to come up with a more structured game plan. He needs to develop. He needs to get siege. He needs to yeah be ready to knock down some castles. Um, it's gonna be tough to break through here and actually finish Clifford off. Uh, but. On Clifford's end of things, he again has no military on the field. I'm yeah. I'm really curious to see what he ends up doing. Yeah, what, me I, too. what I want to see or what I would advise. He's got three stables up already. He is researching light cav. Yeah, I want I think a lot that's more what food. He intends to do. Mm -hmm. You know, I it's interesting so. because you, you've talked so much about the knockout punch and the you know getting the tempo under control. And what we're seeing here is Red Clifford gaining an advantage, not just with less military, but with literally no military. Nice. I mean, he's got some skirmishers now, and he had some camels. Hmm. But, like, for a long time, he had literally zero military. Yep. That's right. And that's sort of... I mean, I, I think the Belgian had the potential to pick up the, you know, the, the momentum, uh, but just wasn't making the right kind of aggressive moves now we to have Clifford a... in the Imperial Age Belgium is not yeah. anywhere near Imp so are we going to see to Trebs come perspective out? On this, yeah to give a perspective on this the Belgian has five archers on that southern TC that aren't firing they're just standing there if yeah. you were to push them up and stage them off of Red Clifford's gold near his I guess his second TC mm -hmm. his southernmost TC at any rate you know, they could begin doing something there. As it stands right now, he's invested into military, but that military does nothing unless he uses it. Right. Right. Red Clifford using Scout Cav to counter fire ships. That's, you know, that'll work. Fire ship goes down. Mm-hmm. You know, the Belgian has enough military that if you were to find the right hole and, and poke the right area, I think he could do some major, major damage. Right. I think he's he's waiting to find, you know, waiting to secure his lead. I don't know if he feels like he's got the tempo under control or what, but, you know, if you look at that southern TC, he's got two, two mangonels and all those archers trying to deal with his TC. You could kill those villagers. You might lose one or two people, but you could kill all of those villagers. The Belgian not a major issue. The Belgian needs, and, and we see that battering ram in the north is going to go down. Yeah. Uh, the Belgian needs to prioritize getting ballistics. For yeah. Those archers. Agreed. He also hasn't gotten the archer armor, mm -hmm. and that's a little concerning to me. Right. That's the reason why those vills, you know, it's like three vills did as much damage as they did to the archer. Exactly. Now, I almost called him Fetty Almonco, no joke. Uh, Red wow. Clifford slipping Light Cav in uh, mm -hmm. past the Belgian, scouting out, seeing what he's got. Going to get a pretty good idea of what he has to face. In the south, I don't know what happened. Oh, the archers. The archers moved forward just like you wanted. They're going to try to shut down this castle. Did not happen in time, but they did get, I think, some vil kills. Yeah. You know, again, I think it's, it's a case Whoa! of... Whoa! I'm sorry. We missed that. That was big. Uh, the Belgian has taken the eco lead. Interesting. Yeah, it's... Not just the eco lead, but 20, eco Levi's. 22 vil kills to three deaths. Nice. Nice. Yeah. So, we see uh, 
we see these archers stationed underneath his castle, and that's working until murder holes come in. Right. Which means for about another 30 seconds. Um, not much more than that. Mm -hmm. Town center finally he, went down in the south for uh, yeah. Red Clifford. If he had pushed those archers forward earlier, number one, that castle wouldn't have gone up. Number two, Clifford wouldn't have been able to be on that gold. And... Uh, you know, the situation would be entirely different as it is. That entire ho uh, horde of archers. No chance of saving it. Not only this, uh, Red Clifford has one villager left over from that town center. He's chasing down the mangonels. Right. Yep. He's going to... He, yep, the villager goes down, but still. Something a I villager want... for a mangonel, that's a good trade. Something that I want to bring up uh, as we... Uh, so Clifford has just researched Hussar. And I have been defending this as maybe, you know, smart strategic thinking and that kind of thing. But uh, I, I really do think that probably it is just a, a mistake in your economic balancing. Is right now with Red Clifford, he's got 86 vills. He has 20 on food and 37 on gold. And... A part of that is just because of the, uh, I don't know if he's researched the tech yet, but the Indians do have the Sultan's bonus, which gives them 10% more gold production across the board. Yeah. So that's pretty neat. But uh, I think a big part of that is just he needs to take half of his gold miners and convert them over into farmers. Yeah. If he's going or... to go into scouts like he like he apparently wants to, you need way more food than you've got. Yeah. Or spend the gold. Right. Either spend the gold or don't gather, don't put so many people on it. Um, now, I, I say that he's using the gold to buy the food. I don't think that's the best way to go about it, but if you've already got the villagers on the gold and you've already got the gold, you might as well. Clifford is the first one to get trebuchets out. And he's researching Shatagni, which... Uh, gives his hand cannoneers additional range. And he and is queuing Sultan, up he is it. queuing up hand cannoneer. So this will be interesting. We see my uh my little AO Age of Empires 3 mod uh right now. Gives them cool little musketeer hats and I think uh probably the gunpowder sound is a little different than vanilla, but that should be fine. One thing I'm surprised by you know, is ha watching both players hit the Imperial Age and really taking their time getting trebuchets out. Yeah. That's something that, for in me, I, it, it gets drilled into my head. As soon as I hit Imp, that's the first thing I'm thinking, is get out trebs. You know, I get that. I will say this, though. I got in a, uh, a multiplayer lobby. I was queuing up for 3v3s, and so I got put in with, like, a couple 1,600 ELO players, and I uh -huh. only... You know, I'm only basically a 950 ELO player. And it was crazy. It, they got their military up so slowly. Huh. Like, I had military on the field before they did. Uh, and that was another thing. They got to imp, and the, their trips didn't show up until like 10 minutes later. And for some reason, I don't understand the math behind it. You know, I, I'm right. only a 950 ELO player. But somehow... That's what they did, and it worked. Like, they ended the game with way more kills than I did, and way more damage. And it's not just a simple case of booming versus, you know, going into military either. Mm -hmm. um, they they had a t a, an entirely different tempo than I'm used to running off wow. of. Wow. So maybe this is that. I don't know. We do see some scouts moving in in the south. They're going to knock out... At least one fire ship. Yeah. Maybe two. Crossbows moving in to try to knock out the Asar. Yep. Which is what they should do. Clifford has more trebs, but the Belgians' trebs are opening fire first, and they're going to knock down this yeah. castle. No, south. I think Clifford could save the castle if, if he moved all the villagers in to repair it right away, but I don't think he should. Mm -hmm. That's just spending stone for repairs down the bank. 
Never mind. He's going to move to try for it. Too little, too late. That castle mm. will probably go down. Yep. There it is. There it is. I think he should have left it. <clears throat> you know, again, you've got... It's the classic situation of they have Treb set up under their castle. You're not going to knock, knock those out. I mean, if you have a decent army, like Heavy Cav or something that can duck under, get the kills, and then pull back without losing them all... Or better yet, they can duck in, get kill the Trebs, and then move to attacking the castle itself. Okay, fine. Repair the castle. That's worth doing. But if it's just the case of, hey, keep this castle alive as long as possible, you're just going to turn a 650 stone loss into a t uh, 1,050 right. stone loss. Nothing Hiram, more. there is an amazing moment happening here. As we have a fight in the north breaking out, hand cannons versus uh, Arbalest and Halberdier. These micro, micro, yeah, micro. Yeah, the, the micro. hand cannons are going down. But yeah. as that's happening, I want to point out, in the water, we have elite cannon galleon coming in for the Belgian. You know, you keep saying the Belgian, and my first thought is, who's playing Belgians? Right, right, right. You know? <laughs> and I know there are no Belgians in game, but seriously. Yeah, wouldn't that be uh, the, the Burgundians? Would that be the same kind of, uh, I'm trying to think, Flemish Revolution? I'm, maybe I'm getting my geography off, but... You know, I thought I thought Burgundy was southern France. I think and, you're right. Yeah, I, be I believe you're right. Northern France? I'm... Right, 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 of course. But, but hey, what do I know? No, I, I believe you're correct. I, I think my geography is off there. Because I was thinking, on the one hand, uh, you're right, I thought Burgundy was southern France, but then... So I, th I thought there was some connection between the Flemish and then the the Belgians, but I, I'm perhaps mistaken. Yeah, the Flemish militia, that is the, you know, Flemish was from Flanders, correct me if I'm wrong. And that was definitely southern towards the yeah. Netherlands. It doesn't make any difference in game, though. No, yeah, regardless. Uh... So we have in the south a massive uh, Indian army moving in that should wipe the floor with this advance. Now, it won't be enough to stop the castle from going down. That castle I mean, will fall, right? Right? Yeah. I think. Maybe. Oh! Oh, less than 100 HP on the castle. Oh, there the it is. Nope, castle? nope. It goes nope, down. Nope, there it goes. It goes down. I, I thought they had it, but with the last gasp. From Hell's the, Heart, uh, the trebuchet the last, stabs at thee. Yeah, at the last moment, the Hussars move to attack the archers. And, and meanwhile, uh, in the north, cannon galleons are free to raid to their heart's content. Now, if you look, if you look at the amount of the map that's controlled right now, cannon galleons on the scene, especially if they're supported by other navy, navy, mm. uh, which they're not, but they could be, um, is devastating. Every castle that Red Clifford has on the scene is vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Maybe even the town center. I don't think his first town center. But most of what uh, what the Red Clifford has on the scene is vulnerable to attack by these cannon galleons. And yep. he doesn't have anything that can deal with it. If he tries to close, he's just going to get archered down. And you see that happening right here. We're looking at a case of 75% of the map mm -hmm. versus 25% of the map. Right. We see uh, Clifford researching Imperial Camel Rider. It's going to go heavy into camels. I which don't again, get I, that. I, I don't understand either when you're dealing with halberdier and crossbows. Yeah, it just I, doesn't I just don't seem see to it. do... It doesn't seem to give you anything. Maybe he says, hey, I've got the gold. Why the heck not? But he doesn't have that much gold. Interesting. He's even using the cannon galleons to thin out the skirmisher numbers. I think skirmisher is the right choice. Yeah, I yeah. agree. Skirmisher is a great choice. Deals with the archers and deals with the, <coughs> the halves just fine. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I even think that the, uh, um, what's it? The hand cannoneers was a great choice as yeah. well. He just ended up not controlling them enough to keep them alive, and, and that cost him. Here we go. The, 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 the final castle for Red Clifford. Uh, at least the one that's currently standing. Uh, this castle will be going down. Yep. 
And Clifford is, is queuing up demolition ships. He's going to hope to knock out these cannon galleons in a single strike. You know, these camel riders, they're, they're moving forward to deal with the with the archers. Mm -hmm. I just think they'd be so much more effective if they were light cap. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, if you're you going to go, well, I don't know. The skirmishers are dealing with, with the help, so there is that. You know, they, they have thinned a substantial horde down to, you know, 15, 10, 9. So there's that. Okay. And I'm not saying Clifford's out of this by by no means, but mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I think if we just keep playing these same numbers, unless he makes a tech switch, it's just not going to work out for him. Now, in the south, the docks have gone down, and the demo ships are exposed. I don't think Clifford realizes it. He Oh, there it is. There it is. Yep. He is now moving to try to get some damage in on these cannon galleons. Most of the ships go down like that. I, that was not what Clifford wanted. I'll just put it that way. No. Definitely not. I just feel there is gold in the exact north of the map. Directly in the corner. Clifford saw it. He wanted it. He's not getting it. At this point, what do you what do you do? Uh, so we have all right in the south, skirmishers and trebuchets knocking down Japanese infrastructure. He's trying to open up the south, maybe to get access to more gold. Yeah. I don't know if I don't know if it's about the gold or about making a bid for not for the throat necessarily, but you know, reduce and then destroy. Mm -hmm. Because he's supporting it by cat or by uh, um, trebs, a lot of trebs. That's not one or two trebs. Yeah. Um, that's basically his entire treb force, if not his entire treb force. I can't quite see. Almost so, his whole army. Yeah. So he's not just looking to to open up, open up an avenue. Either this approach, either this vector of attack works, or he loses, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Can those cannon galleons reach that castle? I think they can. I believe so. I bet they can, yeah. Heck, even the galleons can reach the castle. And meanwhile, in the center of Clifford's base, we have pikemen moving, or halberdier are moving in, um, and doing a fairly good job raiding. We don't yeah. typically see skirmisher, I'm sorry, uh, again, halberdier as a raiding unit, but um, in this Here case... They can do it. Yeah, and, and seeing as your opponent is just going camel... Well, yeah. and look at the look at the build numbers. We're now at 100 versus 20, and... I'm sorry, not 100 versus 20. 100 versus 80. That's a 20 build right. difference. Like you can you can rinse and replay all you want, and for all the gold that Clifford had earlier, you know it's now 837 versus 2837 or 2878. But still, you know yeah, 2, the gold, gold more, is all right? the gold is all in one hand. The bills are all in one hand. I mean, in the south, that castle and that town center did go down. Yeah. It is satisfying to watch cannon galleons at work. Mm -hmm. It doesn't often happen that way, but it is satisfying. There's just something majestic about the arc of cannonball. <laughs> now, what I'm wondering is, can a cannon galleon hit that center town center? You know, the one that's only 600 yeah, health yeah. left. All right, now, believe it or not, it is the Belgian who has elected to get up a mass of scouts. And we see that in kind of the southern part of his base. They are now moving yeah. out to perhaps find and destroy those skirmishers. Oh. You know, when, we, when you look at what it... When you look at what's good against skirmishers, you know, mm -hmm. Scout Cav can do, can do pretty good. You might think that heavy cav is better, and you know what? Honestly, maybe it is, and especially since the Belgians got the food for it, why not knights? Right. Okay, fair enough. 
But even with that, with the amount of people he has on food versus what Red Clifford has on food, he can afford to lose that entire horde of scouts twice, three times over, and he'll still come out ahead. Wow, those Halberdier were perfectly timed to stop the camel push in the north. And yeah, now they're they actually were. getting trapped. Oh, no. These units are getting trapped, and they will be slowly but surely wiped out. If he doesn't let him through, he, he might let him. Yeah, what? right. Okay, go. There you go. Okay, wow. Yep. Wow, yep. wow, wow, wow. Just cornered. Oof. Now, if you're Red a... Clifford, what do you build? I think you go heavy into skirmishers, and uh, you, you, this has basically become a trash war. You, know, you yeah. go heavy into skirmishers, you use the skirmishers to knock out. The enemy spearmen, the enemy uh, arbalest, and you know you hope that he turns around and goes, uh, you know, like in this case, scouts. Well, your camels are really good against scouts, you know, and you've got all that gold backed up. You know, you can yep. then you then go Look camels. Look at that. He didn't house wall in that castle, guys. Mm -hmm. How many times have I said you always, always wall mm -hmm. in your castle? Yeah, dude. I mean, I think that. If you were to look at an individual player, you know, like if you take an, an average, I don't know, 1050 ELO player, right? There are probably going to be things about that player that are more than 1050 ELO, and then things about oh, that yeah. player that are less than 1050 ELO. Right. One right. of the things about you that I think you are, like, probably way better than your ELO at are those sorts of little things, like remembering to always wall in your vills when you do a castle drop. Uh, it can save games, you know? Yes. Now, he will still get the castle up because he does have the army there. Yeah. He has pushed back the scout force. I don't think scouts... It kind of played out the way I was suggesting. Now camels are on the field, and camels will make short work of scouts. So, uh... Yeah. The Belgian kind of needs to decide what his game plan is from here. You know, it feels like the momentum is all on the side of the Belgian. And the score reflects that he does have a, a, you know, a lead. It's right. only 3,000 points, but it's still 3,000 points. Having said that, looking at the eco and the military bars, it is going back and forth. You know, it's not really tilting straight into Red Clifford's side, but he's right. evening it up pretty, pretty regularly. It's it's fun to watch. One thing to remember, at least about the military bar, is a significant portion of that is the navy, which yeah kind of swings back and forth from decisive to meaningless, depending on the situation. So if you subtract out, like right now he's got um, fourteen cannon galleons and twenty one galleons. So yeah, that's thirty five. You subtract thirty five from eighty nine, and you're dealing with. Uh, what is it, 54? So the military numbers are almost even. Yeah, on the land. On, on land, right. And galleons have gotten, you know, what they can. And it kind of, you know, remember what I said earlier. Cannon galleons, they can get a lot, but most of this most of this map is on the fringes. You can see the map, the water entirely and still win. Easily. Right. Easily. So not that Navy is useless. Clearly, the Belgians proving that to be false, but... Um, Red Clifford making no effort to re uh, reassert control over the water, and he's yep. still managing to do damage. The yeah, question middle, has been answered. They yeah. can, in fact, reach that. The middle town center finally goes down. I find this set fascinating. I want to pull back just a second and think about the, the series as a whole, because we're seeing both in the last game and in this game, these are long games where they have both elected to go deep into the post-imperial age. Um... Just heavy industry, heavy back and forth waves of units. Yeah, I, I just I find it fascinating and very different from every other set that I have watched thus far. I don't know something about the style of it. I'm, I'm not saying I've seen other games go into post imperial, but. Um, just something about how these guys do war is yeah. unique. At least, at least unique for the set. Unique for 
what I've cast and witnessed uh, in the Wandering Squires Cup. You know, I think it's tough. Like, if you watch pro level games, like, you know, Hera versus the Viper, there's uh, almost a level of tempo. They mm. match each other. Yeah. And in a lot of the other games that we've seen, both on the Wandering Squires, I think yours versus uh, Envy for Tom, for instance, kind of was this way. The level of tempo matched. The strats differed, but the tempo was the same. And in this, I think we've got two different players who are both different tempos and good at their tempo mm. uh, going in against each other. And we're watching that play out. It's not something you get to see very often. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I will say, though, uh, I'm watching the Belgian. He just sent in a bunch of scouts into Clifford's base and killed many, many, many villagers. You see the I Eco KD. It's, uh, Rick Clifford has 108 vills lost to 31. So I'm thinking, I'm about to say he's about to call the GG, and there it is. Yeah, it has to be. What an incredible set that we have here, Hiram. Uh, this is something else. You know, it is so cool to watch so play these two players. They're both different. They, Like I said, they've got different tempos. They've got different styles. They've got different priorities. Mm -hmm. And yet, in spite of that, it really feels like they're, they're pretty evenly matched. They're going pound for pound, blood for blood. Uh, good game indeed. Good game. That's only match three. Let's jump into match four of the AWE2 Wandering Squares Cup. And here we are, game four, the Belgian versus Red Clifford. We're on Clifford's home map. He is in the orange playing as the Mongols versus the Belgian in teal playing as the Berbers. Now, before we get into the analysis of the map and the sieves, uh, Hiram, you were telling me at the end of the last game about uh, the tempo between these two players and how the tempo seemed different. Um, can you fill me in on what you've got in mind with that commentary? So I've only been able to see a few games, and so I, I don't want to make a comment about the players, but in what we've seen so far, um, we've seen the Belgian. He's making these expansive plays. He's going for small but meaningful Im impactful changes early mm -hmm. on in order to take control over the map. We saw in the last game, he would he did things like uh, building outposts around the the entire exterior of the lake, getting, mm -hmm. getting track of where Red Clifford would move. Early right. aggression with three men at arms and then a fire galley. Little things like that. He's not going for an all-in in those plays, but he's looking to make small differences, small plays with very meaningful differences. And he's making several of them. Red Clifford, on the other hand, he's shown a propensity to do... Uh, he commits to a strategy, and then he executes that strategy. Uh, and I think he does pretty well at it. Uh. Like in the last game we saw, for instance, he went fast castle, and he played pretty typical fast castle TC boom. Uh, so the Belgian has a try this and get what you can and try that, or at least that's what I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. And Clifford has a, has a, a, an idea, a mindset that he goes into the game with, and he's focusing on that. And what we're watching, you know, it's not good strategy versus bad strategy. From what I can tell, it's different ways of approaching strategy as a whole. It's like mm -hmm. a level of, it's not micro V macro. It's, it's different levels, different types of macro against each other. And, you know, they both have taken victories. So, you know, one is not necessarily better than the other, but it's been interesting to me watching mm. just how differently they approach circumstances yeah. uh, while being on a very level playing field. One thing that's kind of scaring me out of the gate is, uh, at least for Red Clifford, is I think he just got his first boar. Yeah. And uh, the Belgian has been working on his for a while now. So I think the food income is coming in faster for Teal. Part of that was the luck of the draw. He built his town center right on top of a boar. Pretty easy to to get that uh, orange. Right. Although I got to say, he's doing a good job. They're both doing a good job luring in boar quickly. This was something I right. never got a hold of on this map. I would always wait for one boar to be done and then you know, right. go to my next one. The kind of... I don't know, mass boar lure that they're demonstrating here is great and not at all what I was used to. Right. Now, I want to point out Red Clifford seems to be pulling the boar from closest to him and the Belgian's pulling in boar from mm -hmm. uh, uh, from distance, as far away from him as, as he can. Mm -hmm. That's going to make a huge difference later on because Red yep. Clifford is going to have to have to hunt it down. Although I will say, Clifford sees it. 
you know, he's got his scout following this villager or his horse. It's not quite a scout following this villager. Uh, he knows he knows the play. Oh yeah, look, and he's he's putting in the work to try to get this vill dead, and it's not gonna die. But well, yeah. yeah, no, it's not gonna die. But that does mean a weaker vill. You know, it, it could be a want for want of a nail sort of thing, right? Where yeah. just because that vill's a little weaker, it means it takes one less hit, which means the scout can move that much faster. And you know, anyway, you know what's. It's little things like that. I love to see it. We saw in the last game, uh, he positioned his his transport ship um, in front of the fishing ships, just slowing right. it down. You know, right? Little things like that can can stack up to make a, a pretty big difference. Right. Right. Now, before we go any further with our general commentary, let's talk a little bit about the Civ choices here. This is Clifford's home map. He's playing as the Mongols, and what jumps to my mind for the Mongols is two main bonuses. One, hunters work 40% faster. So that means that... I was talking about the Belgian having some luck with the boar, but the Clifford's Mongolianvilles are going to be able to collect so much faster from boar than uh, Belgian's Berber sieves, right? Yeah. Uh, that's a really nice bonus. But then on top of that, of course, if you're talking Mongol, you are talking Mongodai. There are some options out there. Scout Rush. They have nice cavalry in general. They have faster firing cav archers if he decides to go for the vanilla cav archer. But the Mongodai is just such a strong, unique unit that for many Mongolian players, you just want to rush up to Castle H and start pumping out Mongodai. On the other hand, with the Belgian, he has the faster moving vills, which are great on really nomad maps in general, especially nomad maps like this, where you're trying to lure so many boar, and right. you know, that extra movement speed is really nice. And then, the thing that I am really fascinated about is the genitour. If Red Clifford decides to go Mangudai, well then you have a mounted skirmisher as a response. That could be uh, a great counter to the typical it Mongolian can, play. Although I will say, their firing rate is slow enough for the genitour, and the Mangudai's is fast enough that mm -hmm. if you're able to micro that good... Mm -hmm. or that well, you know, however you want to say it, I have seen Mongols with, with Mongudai just completely slaughter mm. genitours. Yeah. Um, I mean, if don't, you see... don't ask me who is playing the genitours. <laughs> and as we watch a uh, moonwalking uh, Vil here, uh, making his way over... Yeah, there we go, to the other base. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I won't ask you, Hiram. I, I have my suspicions, but I will neither confirm nor deny them. Um, but yeah, I I agree. I mean, obviously, if there's a big micro-macro difference, I don't think we've seen that in these games, that one player is so much more skilled at the micro. No, but... I, I guess what I'm saying is is if micro is equal, then um, you can push Mongodai a lot harder than you can Genitour, at least in my experience. They fire mm -hmm. faster. Um do do Mongols get thumb ring? Um, I'm pretty sure they do. I thought they did. Now nah, you got uh, me checking. Let me see here. We gotta check it. Yeah. Thumb ring. Uh, yes, they do get thumb ring. Yeah. Um, because of the firing rate and the projectile speed and everything else, it is really hard. Um, even if your skills are equal, it is really hard to micro the genitour enough to take care of the Mongu die. I went in and confirmed the Berbers also get thumb ring. So, right. Yeah. Uh, so it is it is a yeah. counter, but when you get a ball of Mongodai up, you know, you gotta have a pretty sizable ball of Genitour up. It's not yeah. It's not as hard a counter as you might think, is I guess what I'm trying to say. Well, are you saying that you would prefer the regular skirmisher? Not necessarily. I think it's good, but I guess what I'm saying is is it's easy to think, ah, mounted skirmisher versus cav archer, we we mm -hmm. know who's going to win that fight. Yeah. Uh, no. Well, so, I, I think yeah. the big difference is going to be the economy. You know, uh, is agreed. You know, is, is one. Agreed. It, it, we we do see, by the way, Clifford is on stone already, and he is moving yeah. up to the castle age. So, the, or is the that... real function? Go ahead. No, I'm I'm so sorry. He just hit the feudal age. My bad. Yeah. So just a feudal. Um. So I predict he will go Mangadai. That's his plan. Yeah. 
will the Belgian have the economy to pump out a counter or a response? Maybe he does some kind of scout rush or something. It doesn't look like it. Uh, I mean, if you're going to no, scout rush... I'll take it back. I'm so sorry. Yeah. i take that back. He's got two on the field. Yep. He might be trying something. Loops it looks around. like he's going to go for it. Two is going to be hard, although he's got that... Uh, Clifford has that one villager who's pretty vulnerable. I predict that one's going to get sniped. Um, mm -hmm. But here it is. As predicted, first... Nope. Oh, oh, oh he there almost it is. First made blood. it off. First blood. There it is. Yeah. First blood. There it is. And... Yeah, so we got at least. I would predict this one goes down as well. I don't foresee that they'll get away. Although he got the wall up, um, he got yeah. at least some progress on that wall. There so he goes, two two bills down. Slow. I don't think yeah. he can get a third, especially not if they're all together. Yeah, he might be able to, but it'll be tricky. Yeah. Now two scouts for two bills. That is a good trade, but it's not an amazing trade, it's as not, you know. Not amazing. And I gotta say, I I, I was predicting Clifford going into the castle. And he probably still will, but right. he is using a lot of that early stone uh, to get stone walls up. So well, I think he's going for maybe got, a slower long-term play. Yeah, and he's got almost all of his eco around his TC. A third fill down! Oh, no. If you, are, if you are Clifford, you've got to be feeling so frustrated right now. Absolutely you do. But then again, okay, here they go in for more. Yeah, there's okay. Finally, one scout down. Will he take a fourth vill? Yes, he will. It looks like oh, he no, will. no, he won't. No, he won't. He pulls back. Now Clifford needs to pull these guys yeah. in under his yeah. TC. At least the wounded ones. He need, yeah, they're he not going to make it under the berry bush. He They'll needs to swap that vill over to the wood line. Yep. Take a vill off of wood. Put it yep. back on the berries. Yeah. Yep. And now looking over here at the Belgian's base, he's kind of doing a similar thing, except he's mm -hmm. got mill, he's got uh, farms around his mill. He's not going for the double ver berry play, mm -hmm. um, or the double double mill play, I guess right. I should say, right. um, which is going to cost more wood in the short term, but it's harder to raid. So there is that. Not the Red Clifford looked like he was going to raid. Oh, I take that back. Uh, the Belgian did go a second mill. Mm -hmm. Yep. So one thing that I, I, I what do I even say about this? I mean, so the thing about that raid, the fact that he got three vill kills with two scouts is amazing, fantastic, great job, right. Belgian. But on top of that, the idle TC time, you know that uh, Belgian yep. is sitting here at, at a minute and some change on idle TC versus Clifford's two minutes of idle TC time. That yeah. adds to the effectiveness of the raid to where now he's about four and a half, five vills down compared to Belgian. Uh, and that means that I think the Berber player has a stronger early economic situation. I will grant, although I do want to point out, idle, t or, idle TC time, yes, he definitely did idle that. Idle eco time is pretty similar between the two. So mm -hmm. oftentimes when it comes to a scout raid, most of your idle time doesn't come in a TC. It comes in the bills themselves having to, mm -hmm. to idle. And he didn't get that much with that. So good raid, but also well played by Clifford, doing what he could to yeah. keep his keep his eco going. Yeah, I agree. It was not nearly as devastating as it could have been, but I do think it does give Belgian uh, an early advantage. Especially for two scouts. You know, standard scout Whoa, rush is what? I'm sorry. Three, I, I want to jump on this. Uh, Clifford has sent a vill over toward Belgian's base and is throwing down an archery range. What is the game plan here? Now, Clifford has stone walls and Belgian has palisade walls. Right. Right. Belgian is first to click up to castle. That's right. Clifford is still, you know, 400 food away. Those vills beginning to... Uh... If he senses that Belgian is starting to up, which I think I would be if I were in his shoes, uh, I would need to be buying... Uh, there it is right there. He's buying some food. Yep. Yeah, he's got to make his way up. He's got a spearman on a villager... Uh, the Belgian sent one forward to go on stone, and Clifford is pushing it out. Mm -hmm. I also want to point out that Clifford is... I mean, he's going to go up soon, it looks like. Um, but he's also got people on stone already. The Belgian does not. So while he'll get into Castle Age first, he won't be able to put, you know, just throw down a castle, for instance. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. Clifford starting his way up to castle. The Belgian with seven on stone now, so, you mm -hmm. know, take back what I just said a second ago. He'll have a, a pretty healthy stone economy pretty quickly. He's also preemptively walling in his gold, or it looks like he is. Uh, Something I find fascinating. Yeah, good, good, good for him, by the way. Although it won't yeah. be that useful if uh, if Clifford is going heavy into archers, which yeah. he looks like he pocket be. walls are good against scouts like Cav, but they aren't yeah. they aren't terribly good at all against archers. Yeah. Um, something I find fascinating is how Clifford was on stone much earlier, but because he had to put that into the stone walls, and I I think that was a really smart move, good move. Uh, but it does mean that the Belgian actually does have more stone and will be able to get up to a castle faster. Yep. Or now the Belgian going center. into knights, which is which is predictable. Yeah, typical Berber. I play. think that's a good play. Yep. Now look here at the uh, at the vill count. It's thirty six to thirty four. So you know three vills would be really nice for Red Clifford right about now. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Three vills means a tied vill count. Yep. Second TC going down on the gold for the Belgian. This and it's on wood too. This is an I ideal love placement. that town center placement. Yep, that's 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 good placement there. The other good thing about it is, you know, with the uh, with the walls he's already put in place, you're not so much blocking the TC off as funneling. Yeah. So I I just want to call this out because this is so great. We do. I don't think we see stone walls enough, and I'm speaking about myself there. I mean, I don't think I put down Agreed. stone walls nearly enough. Here, yeah, the Belgian has, you know, knights out, but those knights aren't breaking through. You yeah. Know, it's it's going to take time. I mean, if they go for the houses and Clifford does not redirect to it, yes, you could get through. No, you're right, uh, right. I think, that's what, I think that's what he should do. He's attacking a gate with X amount of health. Uh, 27, 2700 health versus house with 900. Gate has more armor, etc., etc. He might have been able to make it through the house, yeah. Uh, but he will not make it through the gate. I mean, here we have what is that? It's it's seven. It was five knights on the gate, one villager repairing the gate, and it pretty much just stalled out. Like the the HP was staying even the whole time. So yep. it just gives you so much time to re prepare, uh, spearmen. Camels or my favorite monks. Oh, oh, wait a right. minute. We, we see a fight breaking out here. Uh, Belgian knights versus Clifford's uh, cav archers here. That's a good split on the knights. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Chasing Ooh, down both. One groups. down. One down. Yeah, he needs to. He needs to micro, 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 micro. He needs to move. <laughs> uh -huh. You know the, your viewers aren't going to get that joke unless you post the video. Yeah, yeah. But oh, wait a minute. Is he going to bring the knights into his own base? Oh no! no. I oh. oh, that's a mistake right there. Unless you've got something back at home, and you I know, no, no, you're gonna lose Vils here. Yeah. Well, and look, he's uh, the Belgian has blocked the gate open with a knight. Good for him. Yes. Uh, yeah. Having the presence of mind to yeah. do that. That's, that's beautiful. Really? Yeah. Uh, yeah uh, really? Uh, <laughs> yeah. What did you think would happen? So I mean, yeah. Before you were in danger of losing your seven cav archer. Now you're in danger. You've lost three vills, three more vills, and now you're in danger of losing your cav archer. Uh, this well, is oh yeah, no. and he's putting out. He hasn't teched into pikemen, which you know is understandable, but it does mean that like we know yeah. spearmen only barely tickle knights. Yeah, yeah, and this is the, you know this is the danger of going cav archer or just archers in general. Like you're relying yeah. on getting a big ball of units up. So yep. that that's great if you get there, but and and now we do see a couple of spearmen coming out, scaring the knights away. I think the knights could actually fight that. Uh, I don't think. Right. Yeah, the spearmen don't have any. They're they're feudal age unit, no blacksmith upgrades. But look what's going on at Red Clifford's home. Yeah. He's now at twenty two vills down. I'm sorry, not twenty two uh, vills. Twenty two KD. Thirteen vills down. Oh no. Yeah. Fourteen. Yeah. Fifteen. It and, is heartbreaking. And not to mention, I mean, and now, Belgian and now a forward castle for the Belgian. Yeah, Belgian has a town center up already. Uh, yeah, a second town center. Clifford is only just now getting that second TC up. So, not only does Belgian have more vills, but also the the fuel in the rocket 
you know, it's just so much more potent for yep. the Belgian. Now, the Belgian might be, I'm sorry, Clifford might be able to shut down the Belgian's castle. I mm -hmm. doubt it, but he might. Nope. He's, too many vills, too gonna, many knights. He's going to get a couple of kills, which, you know, Mejor Canada, but um, not... Yeah. Not enough to stop that. So It is a tough position for Red Clifford. Yeah. Yeah. You can say that again. You shouldn't, but you can. It is a tough <laughs> position for Red Clifford. Camel Archers coming out. Interesting choice. Interesting. Camel Archers uh, are a kind of a stronger version of the Genitour. Uh, you know, they're a gold unit, but they are an anti-cav archer, cav archer. Just like yep. regular camels are an anti, you know, cav, cav. So, some opportunities here. The, he will not break through this wall. The, the castle should go up first. Well, Unless the it looks like there's a hole up above that barracks. There might. Nope, there's not. I don't. I don't know. There maybe, might well. be. I don't think there is. Okay, maybe there is. If there's a hole and Clifford doesn't see it, or if he breaks through the, he could break through the house wall here. Yep. Oh, oh wow! That siege workshop came up just in time. Barely. 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 And, and we do have run. we do have pikemen doing what they do against knights. It's they're trickling in one at a time, two at a time. So it's not gonna shut down the, these knights, but No. And if those knights break through that next house, mm -hmm. they'll be able to nope, there it is. Yeah, you know good use of building Oh wait a minute! Uh, from the north, from the north! Units are through. Look at that. Now this castle will go up. But even so, all he has to do is loop these knights around. and Now, yes, but he does, A, cover his base. B, he did get a couple night kills, which is, you know, it's not it's not a big deal, but it's an important deal, at least, at least for him right now. He needs yeah. to thin that horde. I will say, though, just look at the eco for a sec. Yeah. You yeah. know, 62 to 33. Um, to use your old adage... They could delete if they both deleted all their militaries, just cheat coded each other, and right. uh, the yep. Belgian will take this on eco alone. Yep, exactly. I, I think I don't know the language, but I'm thinking that we're hearing the GG talk right now. Um, it looks like it. There's you can't come back from this. You, you you just simply can't. Not unless your enemy just utterly throws. Right. It's funny you said it just before I could. It was on the tip of my tongue. Where, yeah, I go back to that same old adage again and again. If you could... Clifford can keep his army, you know? Just delete the Belgian's army. Still being up uh, double the Vil counts at this point yep. means there's so much more potential uh, yep. for the Belgian. That I mean, just look at the food. You know, the Belgian will be up right. in Imp in the next two to four minutes. Right. Um, right. Yeah. Assuming the game goes on that long. I I'm really surprised Clifford's not calling the GG here. You know, I want to rewind time a little bit. I, I wish I could literally rewind, but I, you know, I, I'll give him credit too. I've been so focused on uh, Clifford's base. The Belgian, I'm sorry, Clifford is raiding in the Belgian's base, and he's yeah. picked up a couple of kills. Not a lot, it looks yep. like. He's he's up to five kills. No. Yeah. But you know, I again, have not enough I, men I, to I, defend, so I attack. Yeah, and I, I really applaud that move. That's the right kind of strategic thinking. It, I don't think it's enough. It's not going to take you no, to, to I, win, but... Yeah, and here we are, Imp, going up yep. for the Belgian. Yep. Yeah, and Clifford, um, Clifford has, you know, you can count yeah. on one hand and a toe. <laughs> the uh, the <laughs> amount of food that he's got. There it is. GG. Yep. I, I was going to say, if I could rewind time, I would have loved to see monks from Red Clifford. Yeah. Yeah, you know, when we saw those initial seven knights, if you just have a monk behind the walls, you are scaring him off in a way that pikemen won't, that camels yep. won't. Uh, that yep. would have been a great Absolutely move. Absolutely so. Yep. I am coming to appreciate monks more and more. Me too, man. I love them. I will say it's a it's a little sad um, because you know the stone walls is the perfect counter to the night play, and there's something yeah. there's something very satisfying about you know going stone walls and then the enemy runs at you with knights and you just be like, ha. Huh. I wasn't expecting that. Right, right. You know, it's so I, you want to see you want to see the counterplay work out. But I think the Belgian, he just it goes back to that tempo yeah. thing. He he responded, 
he was doing little things even from the mm-hmm. beginning to to have a, a large trickle down yeah. effect and you know it would be, it would be interesting to see how it played out if those knights hadn't slipped through but considering how the fight was going even before that uh i think it was just well played right right yeah i i think you know you saw right out of the gate uh the just the amount of what he was able to pull off with two scouts yeah you know was really effective and he never commit he only committed two scouts you know he didn't put yeah. in more food than necessary and with that he was able to really set the stage for a solid mid game, he got the knights out, and yeah, the knights were stopped by the the stone wall. But then he was able to respond to the cav archers, and right. I, I think that, by the way, shows you the danger of a of a fob that forward operating base, right? Uh, yeah, having that archer range out there um, kind of ended up not working out for Clifford. I appreciate the move, but it didn't work out this time. Uh, he was able to to take advantage of that, and then just see opportunity and take it. And from that right. moment really just dominated the field. Well, I will say, I will say this as far as, as far as fobbing goes, I think it's mm-hmm. a great idea. A lot of times mm-hmm. this map is not one of those times. Why is the that? forests on the corners push out your buildings. You can't, you can't hide them okay. or slip them as easily as you would. You're already starting with your enemies. TC, presumably pretty close to the lake and the lake isn't, uh, isn't a good fob location for, Obvious reasons. Mm-hmm. Um, so what you want out of a fob is close enough to the enemy to where you can build up, but not necessarily be discovered until you're going to trip your hand. But look how close yeah. Clifford's fob is to the Belgian's base. Right. Now, try to reposition it somewhere where it can function as a fob. You know, you could put it back up behind this stone, um, up near the the stone walls. You could put it back all the way over there, and maybe it won't get discovered there. But at that point, it's not really a fob, is it? Well, and, well and the thing is, you have to consider the strategy and the units you're going into, too. Yeah. And, and because you're going Cav Archer, and the whole point of Cav Archers is you need time to build up a big ball of Cav Archers. The stone walls would be perfect for that. Keep the Archer ranges just in your base behind the walls. Yep, and, and exactly. And build up your horde. Exactly. And then go out. The, if you look at where the Belgian has his buildings, and he wasn't, you know, he didn't do an outpost play this game like he did last game. Just look at what the Belgian sees with his line of sight and tell me yeah. where you could put a fob re- realistically right. um, where it would function as a fob without getting tripped too early. Yeah. It's almost impossible on this map. Yeah. So for a map like this, I think I think walling off a second wood line, um, getting it under control to where, you know, if you get raided or if you want to set up another TC there, I think that's a good idea. Yep. So I think putting a stone wall where he put those archery ranges, even a double layer stone wall. Heck, why not? Right. Um, Might have been a good idea. But the fob there, I think those archery ranges would have been far better spent back in his own base. Yep. All right. That's game four. Let's move on to game five of this final series. And here we are, game five of the Wandering Squires Cup finals. We have Belgian and Teal playing as the Lithuanians versus Clifford in the pole, uh, in the orange, playing as the poles, right? And we see right out of the gate, uh, both players uh, TCing right here on the center island. Lots of food in Meyer. Uh, I'm sorry, this is not Meyer. This is Boundary Break, Boundary Brawl. Boundary Brawl. I want to say this yeah. is the first time we've seen this map. Yeah, I haven't seen it before. Right. So a lot of food on the center island, and then all of the other resources seem to be out along the you know the edge, the perimeter. So uh, this should be a very interesting map. Clifford in the orange playing as the poles. Uh, you know, we know all about the poles, of course. They get more gold out of their stone. They get the cheaper knights, as long as you get the castle up. Um, they have the oh, the unique unit. What's the name of that Polish unique unit? Oh, the it's not the latest. That's, no, um... no, no. That's that's our Lithuanian, uh, the Belgians yeah. here. The Belgian playing as Lithuanians. Obuk. The old book, yes, of course, right. So both players opening up, going for their elephants. Uh, yeah, they they have the old book. They have cheaper knights. The they could do a tower rush or or a castle drop. Yeah, both have some really cool options. You now, have. I have to say, go ahead. No, no I, I'm sorry. Go, no, you jump in. No, you you finish with your sieve. Well, yeah, I'm just I'm just summarizing the sieves. I, you know, the poles have some cool options, but you have to wait a minute. Oh wow. I am really surprised that we're not seeing these players attacking the boar with the town centers. 
It's dangerous, of course, if you let the boar die, but you're taking a lot of hits with your vills that I don't know you need to take. Well, anyway. well I grant that. The advantage, you, you just finished with poles. And yeah. I think one thing that that the poles do have uh, that comes to mind, they that's regenerate. True. That's true. That is true. We, we will see that over time. Uh, yeah, that's a very good point. So... Uh, but the Lithuanians, though, start the game with that extra 150 food. And then, of course, you do have the potential for the strongest knights in the game. So I think uh, just whenever I see a Nomad map and Lithuanians, it seems like a really solid choice to me. You know? Yeah. While I grant that, you know, I have said before in other games that... Um, Heavy cab versus light. I think I said this in the in the Tom series. Heavy cab versus light cab Civ tends to favor the heavy cab, right? Okay. And so what we have is Lithuanians, which is predominantly a heavy cab Civ, against uh, the Poles, which isn't predominantly, but it is known for its light cab. Right. Having said that, with the uh, with the cheaper knights, you don't get as good knights, but you get them a lot cheaper, especially with gold, and that's a big deal. Mm -hmm. Um, with the gold generation that you get from stone, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. the pulls is one civ, civ where in cav v cav, I tend to favor it. I don't know how they fare in Frank against the Franks. I'd have to I'd have to calc those numbers in a, a bit. But against the uh, against the Lithuanians, I I think I I think the map favors the poles. Interesting. We will see. You know something I'm surprised we don't see here. With both players starting so close to each other, assuming that you're not going to try to lure the resources for yourself, I'm surprised that we don't have either player just sending two vills over and just shooting all the deer, you know, on, you know, uh, on the opponent's true. side. Uh, we did see Red Cliff. I'm sorry, we did see uh, the Belgians steal a an elephant from Red mm -hmm. Clifford. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was pretty smooth. Hmm. And we do see already, uh, looks like we, we have, Clifford has a vill out scouting, it looks like. Maybe she's going to throw a wood down, line down at some point. Uh, the Belgian already has a lumber camp up and is starting the wood production. Yeah. So already in this game, you know, we're seeing that tempo thing I was talking about. Mm -hmm. We have the Belgian doing... Little things like dealing a stealing an elephant, right. um, just little things that if you leverage it can can get a lead. Uh, the lumber camp is another right. minor advantage or just example of that. So it's going to be interesting to see how it plays going forward. We've right. got all of these water buffalo mm -hmm. all over the uh, the water, and I'm a little surprised nobody's gone for him yet. That might be why Clifford is scouted with the villager maybe he intends to to begin doing that a bit but got a lot of water buffalo unclaimed on that water there or on that shallow if rather. you pull up the fog of war difference clifford does have an advantage because he is claiming buffalo and scouting with them and yeah. it looks like check this out well okay belgian has one water buffalo and a scouting yeah. with that one but i'm i'm giving the edge to clifford there as we do see Belgian halfway up to the feudal age, Clifford will probably tech up any second now. I'm yeah. gonna get. I'm gonna guess after this vill, he's teching up. Now I will say this, mm -hmm. because the map is as expansive as it is, and you never know exactly where your opponent mm -hmm. is going to put the the wood line. At least I presume not. Oh, um, Clifford is housed, and he's got a villager queued when he has enough food to go up to the next age. Just well, just tech hard. up. Ah, oh. look. Yep. We have the Belgian almost hitting feudal. So what I was saying is... I'm sorry. Yeah, I didn't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. Pretty typically, you know, you'd want to go scout rush. But in this game, I don't think scouts is a great no. option. No. Uh, unless you somehow knew where the lumber camp was, the, you know, the, the, the gold, the mining camp, and you're able to shut him off of gold. Yeah. That would be a pretty smooth move. Yeah, and we if, do see Belgian going for a, an early stable pretty fast. Yep. So maybe that's his plan. 
but yeah, if, I if, would think he, it, it probably is, but I don't think it's the right plan. If Clifford, you know, small walls his resources well, then I agree. There's this is a waste of food, a waste of time. You're th you're going to throw away your lead. If yeah, it's a pretty sizable if. The Belgian has queued up three gouts, mm -hmm. not just the two he did last game. So yeah, well, interesting change of tactics here. Interesting, too, to see a, a really with, massive migration from Clifford. Yeah. He's sending quite a few vills. He's got, what is that, eight villagers? Yeah, eight vills. He's going for a tower rush. Now, that might be a good play. Eh, eh, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, he's just going to move over to the other berries. Yeah. I don't, yeah, that doesn't do much for me. And, I mean, the, the tower, if it shoots the town center, it won't take down the TC before, you know. No, not a bit. And I agree, you... it's it's not the best play. It, um, it, it, do you I... really want to go into a tower war against the Poles? Depends on whether they have access to stone or not. Now, in, like, an arena, no, you're going to lose the tower war. Right. But in this game mode? It's not like the poles have been able to go drop on stone the moment they went. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Wait, I'm so sorry. Scouts are attacking. We do see one vill down for Clifford, but he's doing a much more effective job dealing with the scouts yep. this time. Well, uh, not only that, he's already got yeah, there it is. on the yeah. team. Spearman already out. One vill for two scouts. Yeah, another scout's going to come in. Yeah. I predict, yeah, he might get another one. He's probably going to lose that scout too. Yeah, I. Or pull it out. I think think that this works for Clifford. I think he's got a, an edge here. Yeah, I, I agree. And just looking at what he's put into that uh, yeah. that watchtower, getting it up and then, you know, maybe surrounding or pushing off to the other side, that might be a good idea. But yeah. look, he's having to try to dominate. Yeah, no, in the center. The other and and that, just, that just means... And it's just not going to work. Scouts are not able to control yeah. Yeah. Look mass at, villagers like that. Look at this. This is... Now, what he should do, he should have one or two scouts in the town center. Kind of backing yeah. up, backing up. Oh, look, wow. Two scouts down. Oh, what is that? What? No, I'm sorry. It's... The Belgian has lost two vills and four scouts. Clifford has lost yep. two vills. Yep. Now, what we're seeing here a little bit is the... Uh, that pole bonus. Is the vill regeneration. Yeah. He is going you know, to lose a villain necessarily. That's that's kind of yeah. sad. But but still, yeah, this is it is this is absolutely favored Red Clifford so far. Well played. Yeah, I, I like it. Now, don't get caught up in the tower fight. I don't think that's a winning strategy either way. Yeah, and look, he's going to lose another. He sent in another two scouts to try to dive that wood line again. But Red Clifford has oh, spearmen there. No, wow! Can't raid. So how many how many scouts do we have down at this point? It's something like. Uh, let's see. Uh, That's eight scouts. Eight scouts. So you're talking seventy five times eight. Seven hundred and fifty minus one hundred and fifty. So six hundred food down the drain. If you're the yeah. Belgian, right? So Clifford now is way closer to the castle age, and that will give him a decisive edge. Absolutely, it will. Especially because, you know, once he's able to to start mining stone, he's already got not just a second, but a third, well, a, a third source of wood, a second lum lumber camp, because you can still chop near your town center, and he is. Um, yeah. He's diversified his resource locations, then again, so has the, so has the Belgian, to his credit. Mm -hmm. Um But if I had to choose one of these players to be here right now, I would be choosing uh, Clifford hands down. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Blacksmith coming in for Clifford. I Again, like it. To give the Belgian his due, even after all of that, he is still up three bills. Yeah. So there, there is a... And I don't know that that's massive. There is a little bit of an eco lead for him, uh, just as far yeah. as the, the potential. Now, yeah. uh, so many resources he threw into the scouts that just more or less got wasted. I think practically speaking, Clifford has an eco lead right now as he's clicking up to the castle age. 
if that doesn't tell you who's got an eco advantage, you know, I, I, I right. think it's a pretty good metric. But there is at least something going there in the Belgian sport. Right. The Belgian I just, I just, raiding, uh, trying to raid again. He gets mm -hmm. another kill, another uh, Vil kill with the scout, right. but he yeah. looks up. Yep. He is over committing to this, I think. And I think what really gets me is it goes back to this tower rush. I, I didn't like the tower placement. It doesn't really block yep. much off for Clifford. He was just able to switch over to the other berries, you know? Watch this. Oh, he's now that. he's now pulling berries from next to Red Cliffers Town Center. Yeah, oh, yes, Clifford sees yeah, this. Yeah, yep, there it does. is. He does. Yeah, it's... that's not really gonna do much for you there. Yep. So okay, you're Clifford. Now nobody's on stone. It's I'm, I actually find it fascinating. He's got seven on gold, nothing on stone. I. I think that's a mistake. I think you're you're not taking advantage of the uh, Polish bonus there, as far as the stone mining goes. But yeah, we see him on gold. We see him on well, actually, we see him on more wood than food. What is his game plan? Do you think? You know that's that is hard to say. Um, I think I think he's not had the opportunity. Well, he throws down a siege workshop. I think that says a lot. We're wow. probably okay. going to see rams. Um, I doubt Manganels, but we could. I, I don't think we're going to see this. I would love, adore to see a smush right now. Or or a, a uh, mush. I should call it a mush. It's a monk rush. Yeah. So yes. you, you, you get down the monastery, you get down some siege, and uh, you just press in on the Belgian. It I would think, be an amazing strategy right now. I think a bad right play right now just because he's going scouts. Okay. That's, I suppose that's fair, but man, give me like, this. It's cool. Monk, Monks is cool. Yeah, no, he's I, going I to lose another it. villager unless he can duck it in. Three, two, he ducks it in. Good for him. Wow, I, I, I didn't even see. Was that over here at the watchtower? Yeah, it's on his watchtower. He okay, had wow. a villager dueling a scout, and he just ducked him in at the last minute. Now that villager is yeah. going to regen in the tower, partially for. You know, being in a tower and partially for being Polish. Uh, what I what him. I want to see, I, I don't like the showing the manganel so early. Um, yeah. Get out a couple of more pikemen. I know you don't have a lot of food, Clifford, but get out a couple of more pikemen just to support your siege. I gotta say, I think the manganel play is good. He's got he's got vills in and near the town center. Okay. Yeah, they that's... can repair the Minganel probably faster than a scout can damage it, unless he commits all of the scouts Don't... to it, in which case... He's, he's yeah, attacking the Watchtower. Okay, I, I, okay I'll, I'll grant you that. And again, Belgians throwing more food away. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, we see it playing out. A what I do not Minganel... like, I gotta complain about this, is he's attacking the Watchtower. The Watchtower is no threat. It's not doing anything. Uh, it, it frees up a little real estate, I grant you that, but... I would much sooner go for the town center or one of the stables. The difference is he can attack the town center or attack the watchtower under the town center. Yeah, he could do that to the stable, oh, which he's doing now. Yeah, that's fair, but only one. Yeah, well, still, I think the stable's doing a lot more for the Belgian than uh, you know the watchtower was. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Maybe you know. Maybe you can make an argument for the TC uh, for the tower. It, it, again, it does open up that real estate, but. Yeah, not just the real estate, but that food. You think the berries that important? I, I, I don't think guess. they're important per se, but if you look at how much wood Red Clifford has right now, he doesn't have wood for farms. And because he's gone workshop Minganel, mm -hmm. he's he's going to be down on wood for a little while. And if you're going to maximize, spending, you know, 30 seconds to a minute knocking <laughs> down that tower to open up all of that food that you don't have to oh, pay no. anything for. Uh, well, there especially, yeah, he kills his own spearman, but it doesn't matter. The GGs are called. And, yeah, I, the Belgian's nowhere near castling up. Um, yeah. All in feudal works when it works. Yep. But when it doesn't. It doesn't. But when it doesn't. And Clifford's showing what you can do with just one siege unit in the yeah. right place at the right time. Look well at this. Done. Kill death is 5 to 35. Well Unbelievable. Played. And it goes to it goes to your point. I you know, I was talking up the Lithuanians. Boy, that extra 150 food, right? But man, 
Um, uh, you know, again, Clifford really using the Polish vil regen we, bonus. We didn't effect. talk about this. Um, because we were busy talking about other things, but Red Clifford has knights in the Belgians' back line. He's raiding his farms. Unbelievable. Did... <sighs> Boy, noob caster alert. I... Right. This whole time, I've not even looked at the base in the corner. I've not even looked at... What? What? All right. Well, let, let's... What a what a great move from Clifford. And now, yeah. I, now I truly fully understand why... Uh, this game went the way it did. Boy, fantastic job for Clifford. Well done. Uh, let's go ahead and click that up. All right, moving on to game six. And here we are with game six of the Wandering Squires Cup final series. Again, Red Clifford in the orange, not the red, playing as the Saracens versus the Belgian and Teal playing as the Aztecs. Saracens versus Aztecs. Hiram, I know that you have a lot of experience playing Aztecs. They're one of your favorite civs. They uh, are. Do you go up against the Saracens a lot? How do you Not read that lot. matchup? Um, Saracens go, in my experience, they they have good navy and they have good archers. I and mean, they have mm. good other stuff too, navy and archers. Right. On a, a map with naval pressure, Saracens tend to win. Mm. Um, on a map without na naval pressure, Aztecs tend to win. Because if they go archers, mm. I mean... A uh, an Eagle Warrior comp with Garland Wars with um, blacksmith blacksmith upgrades is hard for for Saracens to deal with in my experience. Mm -hmm. um, that's not to say you can't go something else. Uh, I think cost wise, knights trade favorably against eagles. So if if the Belgian decides to go down that line, he could probably do that. Right. And I think Mamelukes, they do uh, they do melee damage, don't they? That's right. They're, they're kind of like throwing Axemen on a yeah, camel. Yeah, that's what I thought. So if if he goes Mamelukes or something similar to that, I would be... I I could see how that would, would really mess up an Aztec play. It's hard for an Aztec to counter. Is it that? I think the Mamelukes... I may be wrong about this, but the Mamelukes, I want to say they do anti-cav damage. That's kind of their, their shtick. So yes, but they do melee damage, and they're you can kite eagle warriors with them. Hmm. I don't so know if again, that mobile. I'm I'm a 950 elo player. Mm -hmm. So this is what I see. Right. Um, I'm not I'm not saying it's meta. I'm not even saying it's good. Um, yeah. I'm saying it's what I've seen. Yeah. No, that's that's fair. That's fair. Uh, yeah. I what I'm going to be interested in is do we see from Clifford, if, if you're going Saracens, you're, you're in a tournament game. Uh, again, you're, you're, it's two to three right now uh, in the Belgians' favor. Yeah. Do we see him taking advantage of the Saracen market to try to you know, blast up to the Castle Age as quickly as possible? The Saracens have one of the fastest uptimes of any civilization in the game just because of their ability to use their market bonus. Um or maybe, again, like you're saying, maybe he has the Mamelukes on the mind, or he wants to go with a, a Saracen Archer play. Especially Archers against the Aztecs makes sense, because the Aztecs have such good infantry. Is yes, there... unless the Aztecs go Eagles. Right. If unless the Aztecs go that's... Eagles, not such a good idea. Yeah. If the Belgian decides to go Archers early, and Red Clifford has time you know, to get some Eagles on the field, mm -hmm. I, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty leery of that. The Aztec Eagles scale very well. Um, their power spike comes pretty much mid-late feudal. You don't have to wait to the Castle Age to get that that knight power spike. You get that from your Eagles. Um, so the ability to push back an Archer Horde with a feudal Horde is there. Yeah. Um, of course, you also have Aztecs. They have, uh, they have better hunting. Their villagers carry more. And so in mm -hmm. a map with resources expanded, yeah, you know? Yeah, I would be. Yes, you have a better uptime, but unless Red Clifford makes a couple pretty decent mistakes, and he's he's already got a little more idle TC time, so there is that. Um, it's not going to be that much faster. Mm -hmm. Look at all of the sheep. Yeah, that the Belgian. Look has at claimed. all of the deer. Yeah, I've learned my lesson from the last game. I 
my attention is so fixated on the town centers and what's going on in the center island, but I am now reminding myself to just take the time to scan out, look at the perimeter, see what's going yeah. on. Because you, you called it back in game four where uh, what we see, I think particularly from the, the Belgian, but we saw Clifford do it in the last game too, is this ability to expand out and just take advantage of the full map, you know, kind of get these secondary bases yeah. set up. And so I'm even now I'm looking at where are they possibly setting up future bases and yeah. where will we see the battlefield of tomorrow, you know? Right. Looks like, I bet you, yeah, he takes advantage of the boar here. Yep, absolutely. Now, I will give uh, a minor criticism to the placement here. You see where he's placed the lumber camp opposite the uh, opposite the mill? Okay. You have wood adjacent. Okay. You know, and the Belgian, the Belgian yeah. is going to have a fast uptime, which means he can go fast cab. Um, locate your stuff close together. Yeah, if he puts the lumber mill over here, it'd be much more, much more readily defensible. Yeah. Yep. Or, if you're going to split it apart, Put like the mill up in one corner and then the lumber camp way south, where hopefully if one gets discovered, the other one don't. But this is almost the worst of both worlds. And mm -hmm. hey, you know, you've only got so much headspace, so no criticism here. Um, but little things, and we've seen right. this especially right. from the Belgian, little things add up. Yeah. This early part of the game, it's it's one of those things where, in Age of Empires 2, I mean, this stage is maybe not as flashy as other stages, as we do see Clifford taking up into the Feudal Age quickly. So I'm reading that as him maybe going into maybe a scout rush, or he, if you're going up this quick, he's only got 21 vils, you're wanting to hit your opponent with some kind of rush. I'm guessing right. that's going to be Eagles. He can't do scouts. No, 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 no. Uh, Clifford. He's the Saracens. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, you're right. I take that back. So, and I and I don't um, think he's got the eek. Yeah, I don't think he's got the eagle for archers. Maybe he does. He's got six on gold, so I don't yeah, think but he put he six on gold have them for on a scout rush. Yeah, that's the, he needs. He's, he's, he's going to get up to feudal, but he's not going to have enough. He might have enough for an archery range, but not enough to sustain uh, archer production. Cool. Three on stone. Yeah. Towers? Either that or, again, part of that Saracen bonus is selling the stone you've got. Uh, yeah. Because it's actually faster to mine stone and then sell stone uh, early on for the first couple hundred than it is to actually right. mine gold. I could I could buy that. So that might be what he's doing here. We'll just... Let's see what he throws down. I was going to say that... Uh, Market, sure enough. So, Market. you know, well, kudos yeah, to Clifford. Yeah. He's taking advantage of that Saracen bonus. I appreciate that. What, and that's probably why he fast feudal, so he could get advantage of this faster. Um, what I was about to say is in the Dark Age, it's not as flashy as other ages because you don't have the military action going on. But it is so fascinating to see how different players set up their economies at the beginning because you're setting up the cornerstone for how the rest of the game will play out. Yeah, you know, for sure. Um, and so the difference between a 21 vil uptime and here with the Belgian, he's got 26 vils, and now he's going up to the feudal age. Just those numbers, those number differences alone, mean the world when it comes yeah. to what kind of strategies they're going to use, how they're going to face off against one another, who's more Here's likely to win or to lose this thing. Go ahead. No, I, Go ahead. no that's, that's all I was going to say. Here's the thing. If you're gonna go up at 21, get you're you're looking to establish feudal uh, feudal pressure. Okay. All right. That means you need military on the field to do something with. Mm -hmm. He's gonna throw away that lead in the next. Like that lead will be gone. It's gone now. As of right now, it's gone. But again, Saracens, he's going up to Castle Age right now, thanks to that mark. Okay. That. Yeah. That's well. That's that is impressive. Yeah. So, you know. Okay, I, I will grant that. I I, I, I totally get what you're saying, though, which is, it, it, with, just like with any rush or situation, if you're going to go up with fewer vills, uh, you got to have some kind of game plan, do something with that lead. Yeah. Most of the time, what we're, you know, demanding and calling out for is, you know, some kind of military pressure. 
here, it looks like maybe he's going to try something by hitting Castle so quickly. Yeah. Um, that's but the question again, now. I mean, hitting Castle quickly, what's he going to do with it? Yeah, like, typically you want to, if you hit Castle first, the play is Knight. Like, like what I'm looking at right now is, yeah, Clifford is halfway up to Castle, and that's impressive. He's got one villager on food. Exactly. 92 food in the bank. The Belgian... So like, once he pays his 800 food to go up to castle, he's got 16 on food. So, exactly. How's that pan out? I want to see what Clifford does with this castle age. Me too. It's again, it's it's very it's drastically different styles, mm -hmm. and I don't know, you know, which one is better or even if one if one is better. Um, something else I think is so dangerous. Go into Clifford's fog of war. Clifford has stonewalled, right? But he doesn't realize yeah. that the wood line he has stonewalled into has a hole against the edge of the map. Yep. And he also doesn't realize that Belgian has set up right there. So he could get in, you know, a couple of Aztec warriors or a couple of archers, whatever, delete a palisade wall here, and yep. all of a sudden that stone wall is useless. Without even an alert. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So we see Eagles coming in for the Aztecs. Called it. Uh, this is exactly yeah. what he should do. Eagles yeah. will deal with almost anything Red Clifford mm -hmm. can build. Mm -hmm. We still see no military for Clifford. None. Not even queued up. Yeah. And this is... And if That's you look, problem. you know, the Belgian is now 40, 40 seconds away from Castle Age. So, yes, you got there faster. But you didn't get there better. Faster isn't good enough. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and I don't mean to knock Clifford, okay? I, you know, I'm not suggesting he's a bad player, and I'm not I'm not knocking the play. I'm yeah. I mean, you know, uh, you've admitted he's higher Elo than you, and and for me, like yeah. I got knocked out way earlier in this tournament. So right. No, so props to him. Pro props to both players. Like uh, there's no. But uh, I do have the eagle eye view, and I can see how certain things can and will play out, kind of, and kind of this is one of them. I'm kind of surprised that Belgian has uh, let his eagles go early, and, and they're just sort of attacking the house. Yeah, I agree. I, I don't think that's necessarily a good play. You know, maybe getting one to attack a house, maybe, but we see so, a Manganel coming out. I got, I got to highlight this, because we see from Clifford a little bit of game five and a little bit of game four. Game four, yeah. we got the stone wall protecting the, the secondary base. That's pretty cool. But then game five, we got that one Manganel. Mm-hmm. And uh, trying to make things work. Now, Just like posting game. a Manganel under a TC, that's that's significant. Yeah. Good for him. Yeah, I was going to say, he's, gotta, he's definitely got to use that TC as cover. Yeah. The trick is, Eagle Warriors are a lot more resilient to uh, even Town Center Fire than yes, Scouts. Yes, they are. And Town Center Fire, if you know what you're doing, can be kited. Okay, okay. The Belgian having a little bit of trouble with uh, trying to close on that mango now. Whoa, Which, castle coming up. There it is. Castle coming up. Oh. Okay. And the monk castle. play from the Belgian. Monks is a good play. Yep. Yep. The Belgian yeah, with military so. pushes them off of the okay. castle and is finally able to close rapidly. Yeah. Now that monk will be able to convert villagers from behind a, a house wall, mm -hmm. which is one of the huge advantages to a monk. Yeah, exactly. Exactly right. So Clifford is putting a lot of effort into getting this castle up. A lot of headspace, too, and a lot of idle I eco was about time. to say the idle Not eco idle time. Not idle TC time, right. but idle right. eco time. Right. So the Belgian isn't raiding, per se. Well, I guess he is now. Um but he is forcing a lot of idle time, and that's basically the same thing. Just, can, I, can I just take it? I love monk play. I, I, I'm wanting more and more out of this. He gets to heal up his units and harass yeah. the enemy at the same time. This castle will... I don't, I don't think it's going up. I think the Belgian, he's got enough wood. What I would like to see from him is Siege Workshop and a ram. You could knock okay. down the castle from the fore end. Uh, it would be almost impossible to counter because you've got the military presence. You've got the monk presence. Um, that castle, you could ram it down pretty fast. I mean, he's ramming it pretty, down pretty well with 
Yeah. With the uh, Eagles, so you know maybe he doesn't feel the need. Yeah, that was one of those moments where uh, you can tell from the way Clifford is playing this that he wanted to get a small uh, a wall up to protect the the Castlevilles. Yep. But it was just uh, not up fast enough, and yep. now. You know, I, I give Clifford credit. He was, uh, you know, taking advantage of getting up to Castle with some cool opportunities there. But uh, he, he did delete the castle, so he has the stone back. He's got enough yeah, stone good. to drop a castle somewhere else. Maybe he wants to put another one down a little bit more defensive. I but... think I think you kind of have to. I mean, if you look at what the Eagle Warriors, they're warriors now. They're not just scouts. Fervor has come can... in. I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just saying, Fervor has come in for the Belgians, so he wants to go heavy into monk play. He's got three monks yeah. out. We're going to be seeing more and more from them. But you see what these eagles can do with yeah. impunity under a town center. Yeah. Those Manganels, posting the Manganel under the uh, under the TC is now no longer a working play. Right. Wounded eagles can be brought back to heal. Um, with three monks, you can probably outheal a bit of archer fire. Uh, and we see them looking to dive that castle underneath the fire of the TC. Yeah, this is this is a hard place to be. They can move now to the other side of that castle and just attack it, probably out of range of the TC and while being healed. I have this to give is... Clifford incredible credit here for staying on top of eco-production. He's only yep. three vills down. Now, I will say this, though. The Belgian is almost done with building his second TC. Yeah, that, that, that's so true, too. Clifford's I... Clifford's getting another, or he's he's keeping his one TC going, and that's good. But the amount of idle time being forced by these eagles, uh, 23 minutes for the Aztecs to 56 for Clifford with equal yep. bills, that's huge. Yep. I want to say, you know, again, we're seeing that tempo difference play out. We're seeing a, a classic fast castle into forward castle play mm -hmm. versus just heavy into military and then doing leveraging what he can with it. Right. I'm loving how these monks are covering and yeah. even augmenting it, these eagles. It's a great combination. You know, four monks can convert four villagers off of building a castle. You don't actually have to kill them. Um, gives you damage. What I would have liked to see from Clifford a little bit earlier is, a, is another TC back in his second base. It's been relatively unmolested. Yeah. Um, another Manganel. I, I think at this point, we've, we've learned the Manganel will not work against this comp. Yeah. That's, that, yeah. See, that feels like an out of airspeed, altitude, and ideas kind of yeah. play. Well, and now scouts. Scouts, yeah. are, scouts will deal with monks. But they will not trade at all, not even a little bit against eagles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's essentially a late unit. I mean, maybe unupgraded eagles. I think I think the eagle still gets the advantage there. Mm -hmm. Um, a slight advantage, but yeah. once you upgrade from eagle scout to eagle warrior, yeah, it's it's not even a fair fight. Second castle goes down. If I'm Red Clifford, this is where I pretty much consider. Throwing in the towel. Right. Right. You, you know, he, yeah, again, the Belgian has the eco lead. He has a massive military lead. Well, and he can basically batter down the town center. Right. Not quite, but basically. I don't know. He might be able to do it. And if he's up. really on top of his micro, he could take wounded eagle warriors out, just pull them back, heal them up, yep. throw them back heal in. Heal them up, send them back in, yeah. Yeah. Man, that town town center is going whole hog, and I don't know if Clifford's going to lose. I'm sorry, the Belgian's going to lose a single eagle. Nope, he's yeah, lost he, two. Yeah, yeah, he's lost two already. He might lose a third. Or oh, here we go. Oh, here it is. Butchery. The yeah. eagles are on the warpath. Yeah. And... <laughs> I like how they dive the monk. Yeah. They can get that kill. It's, so it's good a, for them. It's a fun last bit of defiance. That's fun. Yeah. But... No, but, this the series is yeah, over. I'm gonna go ahead and call it. The Belgian yeah. is our Wandering Squires Cup G bracket champion. So I, I'm just gonna say I'm gonna start kind of the epilogue now as we're sort of watching the Belgian kind right. of knock his opponent out of the game here. 
Uh, one more time, you've heard me say it before, but having been a part of this tournament, it was an awesome experience. Playing against Fede Almanco and then Ten Finger Tom was amazing. And then getting to cast these guys, starting with Tom and, and moving on to Red Clifford and now the Belgian here. Um, it's just an incredible experience. I loved it so much. And uh, Hiram, thanks so much for joining me on this adventure, man. You know what? It's been a lot of fun. I've never done a tournament quite this way before. I've either watched all the games, mm -hmm. you know, if you're watching at the pro level, you know, you don't follow just one bracket necessarily. You right. Kind of watch them all. Um, and then for, for the tournaments I've taken part in, read one, right. um, the journey kind of ends when you get knocked out. Right. Right. Um, excuse me. So just following this bracket all the way to victory, um, you know, just following the chain up, um, has been an interesting, it's been interesting to watch how the play styles would dominate against one opponent and then against another of even though they're, you know, the skill level is relatively similar. It's not, uh, it's not better versus worse necessarily, but it's different. Um, and just seeing how those differences play out, multiple people, different opponents following the chain up. It's been eye opening. It yeah. really has. Yeah. It, it's been awesome to see the different personalities, the different play styles. Um, I, I've learned things that I'm wanting to take into my future games uh, yeah. I, I've already experienced back, uh, with, um, my, my final defeat against, uh, 10 figure Tom's goths, you know, it's like, boy, that really woke me up. And I, uh, I, I've sort of yeah. learned, I've, I've put a little work into learning how to defend against that better. So I think it's already made me a better player. And, uh, again, just an amazing, this is an amazing experience. I want to say thanks one more time to T90 and Dave for hosting this tournament for, to Microsoft Amen for sponsoring that. it. Uh, this was an awesome series. And uh, so, real quick, yeah. But be before we wrap this up, you were talking about takeaways. If you had to give three takeaways, or two, or one, or whatever, just real quick blurbs. Oh for man, viewers, what are your takeaways? Just pick pick a one or two. Yeah, I mean, so these have all been nomad maps. Uh, every yeah. vill counts. You know, it's so important to have a game plan. Know your maps. For me, playing the series that was huge. I feel like. Um, one of the reasons, I don't want to say the reason I lost, I, I don't want to take away from Tom's skill or, you know, Fede Almanco's skill before that, but yeah, you know, one of the things that I kept experiencing was when I would play on their maps, I didn't have a game plan. I would be operating off instinct, winging it, and my winging it would lose every time against their home map with a plan, right? Yeah. So understanding your map, understanding what you're going to do, why you're going to do it is huge. Uh, and I think that's one of the main differences I saw by the time we got to the final series, Clifford and, and the Belgian both had seen it all by now, you know? And so, uh, they they, they both, it looked to me like they both had plans every single map, every yeah. single uh, game. And, and that's, that's huge hat tip to both of them for that. Um, that'd be one thing. Um, you know, it's sort of, uh, maybe maybe the only other thing, and this is hard to see when you're just looking at the games, but having been a former contestant, I could tell you that there is a psychological factor that goes into it as well. And just sort right of um, sort of leaning into the nerves with gusto is, is such a huge thing. And uh, not, not psyching yourself out. That's a really, really big part of the tournament experience. And again, by the time these guys get to the finals, I'm sure that a lot of that's worn off. But at least for me, it was my first tournament, uh, my first solo tournament. And there's definitely something exciting and new about it. And you, know, you kind of want, you don't want to give in to those nerves. All right. All right. Yeah. Well, Hiram, thanks for joining me. Uh, that's my final thanks, by the way. So thank you for joining me on this. This was an awesome uh, uh, series to, to cast. It's a pleasure to cast it with you. Uh, thanks so much, man. And um, any, any last words for the audience? You, Iron Kaiser. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this is the Iron Kaiser, along with Hiram of Tyre, signing out one last time with the Wandering Squires Cup. Thanks so much, guys. Y'all have a great one.